quorum. Thank you. On announcements, uh, phones and pagers, if you have a cell phone or pager, please put it on silent or turn it off. Uh, if you disagree with anything that this commission rules on, you have the right to appeal it uh, to the council. There are appeal cards on the railing over here to my right to fill one out and you can turn it into staff uh, and they will get it to the proper people. Uh, same thing's true with speaker cards. If you wish to speak, please complete a speaker card, turn it into staff, they'll get it up here to us. Each person on each case will have, uh, not each person, each side will have 10 minutes uh, to either pro or con, and uh, you'll have a five minute rebuttal. Um, that's a total of, of 15 minutes a side. So uh, if you've got a large group here that uh, a lot of people wanna speak, I would suggest that you uh, find one or two that may wanna uh, uh, represent the, the group and, and speak uh, on it. Please exit the building after your case is heard or unless you want to stay and, and uh, uh, watch the rest of the meeting. Uh, if you go out in the, the foyer out there, it, uh, uh, the, the sound comes back into the chambers here and it makes it difficult. Please rise for the invocation by uh, Mr. Randolph and the pledge by Mr. Drum. Let's bow heads. Gracious Father, once again, we come before you with bow down heads and lift us heart. We thank you for another opportunity that you blessed us with. We thank you for the rain, and Lord, we thank you for this sunshine. We thank you for every commissioner on this, on this committee, Lord, and we, we ask that we make decisions that's in the best interest of our citizen and for the, for the council. And all these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes on the May 6th meeting. It was a copy of the uh, uh, draft minutes was in your packet. Uh, hopefully you had an opportunity to review it. Uh, and I will ex accept uh, a motion to approve, or if we need to do something else with it. Mr. Matthews, I see you have your light on. Yes, sir. Um, uh, ZC 1405-033, uh, I think there might be a problem. Uh, it shows that I made a motion and Jimmy seconded it, and we were really two people really that voted against it. Um, I think there may be a problem with that. And I'd like the secretary to take a look at that before we approve the minutes. Okay, so you wish to postpone wish to the minutes yes, please. Uh, until uh, next month's meeting? Please. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Matthews, Second. seconded by Mr. Davis. Please vote. Yeah. Motion carries. Thank you. Staff, we have any cases that need to be postponed? Thank you. All right. Uh, first item, uh, zoning case 14-05-039, existing zoning is NC4, Neighborhood Institutional District. The proposed zoning is ED2, Higher Education District. It's 3.87 acres. The petitioner is Christ Episcopal Church. John Pusen or Bert Dubik, owners of Christ Episcopal Church. Parcel located on the southeast corner of Louisiana 21 and Christwood Boulevard. One, Ward 1, District 1. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed as a planned district with residential uses including conservation areas. The zoning change is being requested to allow for an expansion of Christ Episcopal School. Staff does not have any objections to the request. Note that a conditional use permit was previously granted for the expansion of Christ Episcopal School campus on the same site and staff recommends approval. Thank you. Yes, sir. Please state your name. Chairman Doherty, ladies and gentlemen of the commission, thank you for uh, hearing us today. My name is Bert Duvick. I'm here on behalf of Christ Episcopal Church and Christ Episcopal School. Uh, staff has given you a, a, a brief run through, and I'll, I'll, I'll expand on that a little bit. Uh, we thought we had enough room originally to, to fit our track and our field in, and then when we sat down with architects, we realized that we were going to have a very crowded campus. And uh, so we've elected to, to uh, downzone uh, 
from uh, a commercial zoning to the educational zoning, the balance of our property all the way up to where it fronts on 21. And uh, I request your approval of that, and I'm here if you have any questions. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak uh, on this, uh, on the pro side? Okay. Thank you. That Sandra Slifer, uh, I'm representing the Association of Associations, and we did meet with uh, Mr. Duvick, and he did explain what he uh, was wanting to do, and the AOA did vote to um, uh, support this project and this rezoning. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this? Anyone else wish to speak against? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Um, Ms. Casbon? I'll defer to Mr. Lauren. He is uh, more familiar with the area. Hug? <clears throat> First of all, I live very close to this development, and I feel that we are very fortunate to have Christwood in our community. <clears throat> I was over there this afternoon, and you would be extremely impressed if you drove down the boulevard and saw the schools, that their very small first graduation class have the stu the seniors have been accepted into. It it's almost mind blowing to see the the list of academic achievements those kids have have gotten. It's an excellent school. I have one question I would just like to ask real quickly. <clears throat> yes, sir. For years, we've made a very strenuous attempt to keep the, the, the buffer zone that fronts right along 21, the property that, that is right up next to it, so that when you drive down through there, you see pine trees. Yes, sir. And, and I notice there's a a setback, is that to be kept? Yes, sir. There, there is a, a, a mandated 100-foot buffer from the property line moving in. We, we will underbrush the trees, uh, but we're, we're, we're about keeping trees. We're, we, we, we've, we've added more oak trees than we've taken down on our property, and if you, if you stand back and look at the curriculum of the school, nature is a huge part of it, from our, our, our canoeing to our hiking to, to the courses that, that the kids take. But it, it is our goal to save as much as we can. We're just trying to, uh, the, the athletic field with, with the track around it is, is really a destination location in the middle of the day. We thought we might put classrooms up on the front of Highway 21 at one point, but then we said, well, the, the kids are going to have to walk from one end, of the, one end of the boulevard to the other around a track and a field, and it just didn't make sense. So we've elected to push the field so we can fit the classrooms in between the field. But we, we, we very much would like to keep the trees to answer your question. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve. I'll we have second. a motion by Mr. Lauren to approve. I'll second. We have a second by Ms. Casabon. You gave your light on, so I take it you would like to speak also. Okay. Mr. Matthews. Staff, that 100-foot buffer, is that a no-cut buffer? It is not a no-cut buffer. No, the, the, what it's a 100-foot building setback and a 50-foot buffer. It's a 50-foot no-cut buffer or just a buffer? It's a buffer. Okay. So, I mean, they can clear the underbrush under the trees? Yes. Okay. That's fine. Okay, anyone else wish to speak? All right, we have a motion and a second to approve zoning case 14-05-039. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Item 2, zoning case 14-05-035. Uh, existing zonings A1A Suburban District. Proposed zoning is NC5 Retail and Service District. It's 2.45 acres. The petitioner is Son, Sean Carouge. Uh, the owner, Sean Carouge, Greg Allen Knight, Jeffrey Bryan Knight. Location is uh, partially located on the southeast corner of Louisiana 437 and Knights Road, being 78392 Highway 437, Ward 2, District 2. Staff? 
The site is currently developed with an unoccupied commercial building and a single family residence. Staff is not completely opposed with the request to rezone the property to commercial. However, the NC5 zoning designation may be too intense for the area, considering that the site is surrounded by residential uses on the north, side and east, on the north south and east sides. Staff recommends that the request be denied. Thank you. Yes, sir. Please state your name. Sean Corrigé. Okay. I'm one of the owners of the property. Actually, what I'd like to do for members of the commission is I'd like to actually reduce our application at this time from an NC5 to an NC2. And that's due to a, a misunderstanding of the, of the actual zoning designation. So we'd like to reduce it to an NC2. Okay. Uh, staff, if uh, uh, his request, if this is reduced, does that change your position on this? Uh, we don't have any objection to the NC2. I just want to make sure that the petitioner and the owner understands, you know, the uses that are allowed under NC2. Uh, we previously had the conversation of a, a food store, of a farmer's market, mm -hmm. which would not be permitted under NC2. Correct. Our understanding of the farmer's market has been changed because all we were looking to do was actually just offer their products within the store. We did not want to operate a farmer's market within the store where each individual farmer comes in and sells their products. Okay, but under the, under the NC2, you're allowed to have... Or, you know, a, a pharmacy, but not necessarily a, a grocery store, a food store. We're not allowed in NC2 to have a grocery store. We were looking to operate at either a delicatessen, art gallery, um, one of those within yeah, the, the deli. I know the deli is a permitted use. The the art gallery is a permitted use. Um, you're allowed to have a um, drug store which the drugstore carry a lot of items that are that a lot of food store carry. And that's what we wanted to operate. We actually, what we wanted to do is because of the, the rezoning and our understanding of the rezoning, which took place when it was a rural zone before, and then it reverted back to a residential. We just want to open the doors again as it was rezoned before, which our understanding was an NC2 at the current definition. So we're not looking to change the use of the store other than to operate it the way it was previously as a commercial building. Because this building's been in a commercial building for at least the past 90 years, 80 or 90 years. So we're just looking to, for an opportunity to open the doors again as it was operated before. Okay. Mr. Matthews? I think Martha oh, had her I'm light sorry. on first. Oh, well, wait, uh, wait just a moment do before, we, I, I know before I come back to the opposition. commission. Yeah. We, we need to... Yeah. Uh, See if there's anyone else. And you're asking for the uh, change to be from an NC5 to an NC2. Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll need uh, a motion uh, to accept that to change it. Um, Is that correct? No. Mr. Chairman, can't you can't you uh, change it and and uh, and vote all at the same time on it? I think yeah, that's we what can we do. do that. Yeah. We yeah. can do that. Okay. Yeah. Let me, you, you, let me you can. see before we do that if there's anyone else in the audience that wishes to yeah. speak. The, the recommendation would be the protocol to change what the request is being submitted, vote on the change, make it clean, and then come back and address the issue to an NC. I'll make a motion that we that we uh, change it okay. from uh, a, 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 a five to a two. Uh, per the, uh, one of the owner's request to change from an NC5 to an NC2, and we have a second by Mr. Mr. Matthews. And just to clarify, that is just to change it for the agenda, not to vote to, for right. it to be an NC2. Okay, so we need to vote on that, so please vote. That motion carries to go to the NC2, all right? you have any further comments? No, just I wanted to mention that, again, the existing structure is not going to be altered or changed in any way. All we're looking to do is just aesthetically bring it back up to, uh, to presentable uh, aesthetically. We're not looking to change any of the sizing, any of the parking, any of the structure whatsoever. Just okay. open the doors and operate it as a business. All right, let me see if there's anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak on this. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this item? All right, I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Ms. Casabon, I believe you're... Uh, yes, um, he is correct. This this particular building has been in uh, use, I don't know, about 90 years, but it has been various things, and it has been commercial, I think, in our zoning. 
there is a residence behind it, but if I'm not mistaken, the Knights own that property. We own all it. of the property around mm -hmm. it. And I know that we still have, we do have a home um, right on the property line, uh, residential, that I am concerned about. But I'm concerned about the 2.4 acres in order for, would this take in even the Knights property, you know, the home in the back? Uh, no, or, or no, just that the vacant lot. I'm concerned with the size. Okay. Uh, if 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 you're not going to alter the building, mm -hmm. the, you know, and you're going to keep it the same size, I don't feel that you're going to need the whole two point. Um, it says uh, 2.45 acres rezoned. So that is my concern. I do not have a problem with uh, returning it to commercial. Mm -hmm. It's the the amount of commercial because once we do this, that whole over two acres is is rezoned and in the event that you would need something else i feel like you could come back if it, it you know if it goes into something bigger mm -hmm. but um what you you have a question what yeah i just want the, the building to follow the line here okay there's already some commercial here, correct so all right, so we're looking at what the it's amount. Probably, it's probably 200 feet or something like that, but you could just make a motion to continue along. Oh, I see what she's saying. You want to explain that to him. Um, to, to, it's 200 feet, and that would incorporate that building. You want to show it to him and see what. Okay, everything all right, Ms. Kevin? What, yes, what, what Helen has shown us, that we do have a designated line of about approximately 200 feet back. And she's um, making a suggestion to uh, continue that line straight across for commercial that we don't go back. Any, and that would be able, you'd still have parking, that's, that's even fine. if you wanted to make the building a little bit bigger. That's just my concern. And yeah. then, I, you know, like I said, I can't, um, I, I feel like offer, but you do have the residents next to you that, like I said, I'm concerned about that we'd still have that buffer. I know there's a road there, but mm -hmm. it would be to her property line. Right. Um, but is it, is it so we'd reduce, to I'm to not reduce? sure in, in um, I'll get Helen to ask about the amount. <laughs> yeah, we so don't need the whole, feet back. we definitely don't need the whole 2.45 no. acres. Okay. It was just subdivided right. that so way. So you're, right. you're satisfied right. with what uh, Ms. Lambert showed you? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, to decrease that? down to whatever that acreage is. She explained where the commercial line actually just would extend okay. across so would the property be, that itself. That would be roughly 200 feet back from the highway? Cool. What? How far is it from the highway, Helen? The commercial line. It. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, 200 feet. Helen will have to help me yeah. word it in footage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Gasbon, anything else? No, that was it. Okay. Just on if, he, Matthews, if he agrees to reduce not. the size. Okay. okay. All right. All right, so I'll make a motion to approve. Help me, Helen, on to follow. <laughs> it's the 200 foot. Yeah, to follow along with um, the pattern that is currently which along is, the highway, which is, I don't have the exact dimension, okay. but we, we can adjust. Um, before the council meeting, okay. Uh, that um, uh, approximately between probably two and three hundred. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve approximately two to three hundred feet, and return this back to uh, commercial and NC two. Okay, second. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Casabon, a second by Mr. Willie. Okay. Uh, any further discussion, Mr. Matthews? The motion is to allow the first two hundred or three hundred or so feet. I mean, that's pretty indefinite. <laughs> well, I, I wish my, the zoning map would be working, but it, it's not working right now. I don't know if there's a. I don't. I don't have the exact dimension. I'll word it to say no more than 300 feet. But she said by the time it gets to council, which has to approve it, they will have the dimensions. Okay, no more than 300. No feet. more. Let's, okay. let's do it like that. That gives us something. Yeah. Concrete. No more than yeah. the 300 yeah. feet. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Something. Well, I, swear, I don't have them. I had to get her to help me word Mr. that. But. If you look at the map that we're provided in the very front on uh, LA 437, the, the distance is 252 at the front. Here. If you take that distance and if this uh, map is drawn to scale, it looks roughly about the same in the back that we're talking about. Is that correct? 
Excuse me, sir, I didn't hear your question. If you take this to the back properly and rotate that 252, it's approximately the same distance. Is that correct? So it is, I mean, it's going to be less than 300 feet. Yes, it will. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. All right. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second to approve the NC2 on zoning case 14-05-035. Please vote. <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Item three, zoning case 14-06-045, existing zoning is A2 Suburban District. Proposed zoning is ED1 Primary Educational District. It's 3.91 acres. The petitioner is Jeff Shane. The owner is St. Tammany Parish School Board. Partial located on the northwest corner of C.S. Owens Road and LA 1077, Ward 1, District 1. Staff. The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses. The site is currently surrounded on the south and west sides by Madisonville Elementary School. The zoning change is being requested to allow for an expansion of the school. Staff has no objections to the request and recommends approval. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Uh, thank you, Mr. Doherty. Uh, Jeff Shane on the Jones Fussell Law Firm, P.O. Box 1810 in Covington and uh, represent the St. Tammany Parish School Board, which is both the owner and petitioner in this case. Um, we are certainly in accord with staff comments. Uh, if you will look at the staff report that you've received, uh, the last two pages are individual surveys of the two parcels, uh, the 1.29 acre parcel uh, being uh, at uh, C.S. Owens Road, and in front of it is a 2.62 acre parcel that is at the corner of 1077 and C.S. Owens Road. Um, if you will look at the zoning map that staff has provided you, which I guess is the second page of the report, um, those two parcels have been combined into one, if you'll see as it relates to the proposed subject. But hopefully it's easy for you to see that the Madisonville Elementary School campus <coughs> Uh, extends both to the west or abuts this track and also to the south and across the street from C.S. Owens Road. Uh, and the school board has patiently waited many years for the opportunity to acquire these two parcels and they were finally able to do so. Um, a very obvious question might be what are the school board's plans as it relates to the parcel at this time? We really don't have a plan other than it's certainly possible we may do some soft or limestone parking on a portion of it uh, to relieve some parking needs on days when we have a lot of parents uh, and other third parties at the school. Uh, but the point is there is no phase plan that we can show you now as it relates to buildings, improvements, things of that nature because none exist. But we are confident that this school, as well as many of the schools, particularly in the western part of the parish, uh, those schools are growing and they're growing at a very rapid pace. So it's very important to the school system to make sure that it has the adequate resources and land in order to provide for the needs of educating, of course, uh, children in that area. And for that reason, we respectfully request that you recommend the change of zoning uh, as requested. If any of you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? Ms. Sandra. Thank you, Chairman Doherty, that uh, Mr. Shane came and spoke to the AOA about uh, the proposal for uh, these lots and the zoning request by the school, and the AOA voted to support the change. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this case? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Thug, I believe you had your light on. <clears throat> Looks like it's school night in, in the area. <clears throat> in, the, in the last several years, in, in the Madisonville Elementary School District area, <clears throat> there have been some very successful major subdivisions built, namely Arbor Walk, Natchez Trace. There's one that I can't remember the name to it. Meadow. Jeff, you might can help me. The one that they're putting over there next to the river. River, well, it's a river place now, I think. River place. And then last week, we approved another one over, what I'm saying is they're just continuous exp building. And it's grown to the point that Madisonville Elementary School about two years ago, maybe three at most, 
had to split and build a new school and divide that elementary school into two pieces. So there's a definite need to have the space. And this is, this is smart thinking to buy it while you have the opportunity. I uh, believe Mr. Davis was ahead of you, Ms. Casabon. That's fine. Yeah. Jeff? No problem. Let's see. Yes, sir. On the south side of uh, C.S. Owens Road, the, the portion that's uh, ED1 now, uh, is the section that's currently zoned A2 in front of it up to 1077. Is that also looking at being per purchased by St. Tammany Parish? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Mr. Davis to approve. Do I have a second? I had several seconds on that one. All right. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. We had one abstention on that. Mr. Randolph, I believe that was you, right? Okay. Thank you. All right. Page two, item four, zoning case 14-06-046. The existing zoning is NC4, Neighborhood and Institutional District. Proposed zoning HC2, Highway Commercial District. It's 1.6 acres. This comes to us uh, by motion from the Parish Council on 4-3. Uh, partial located on the north side of Fremo, east of Beth Drive, west of Nellie Drive, being lots 7 to 17, square 4, Pine Shadow Subdivision, Ward 8, District 12. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with commercial uses. At this time, staff feel that there is no compelling reason to increase the intensity of the commercial zoning from NC4 to HC2, considering that the site is surrounded by single-family residences on the north and west sides. And at this time, staff would like to recommend denial of the request. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Uh, thank you, Mr. Doherty. Uh, again, Jeff Shane on behalf of the jones Sell Law Firm, P.O. Box 1810, Covington, Louisiana, 70434. Uh, I represent uh, the owners uh, of this property, uh, but they're technically not the petitioners in this case, as the matter has been referred to you of course, by the Council for Consideration. Um, the history of this property um, is that it was previously zoned C2. Uh, I procured that zoning uh, in uh, 2008 uh, on behalf of the current owners of the property. Um, for those of you that are not familiar um, with Fremo in that area, that is a five-lane road. Uh, and in fact, um, as you can see on the zoning map, there is HC2 property that abuts this parcel to the east. Uh, the tract immediately across uh, from this site is uh, under contract with racetrack and it's being uh, annexed uh, into the city of Slidell uh, for a gasoline facility. Um, with all due respects to staff's report, um, we do feel that uh, the HC2 request is appropriate. For one, it would restore the property uh, fairly closely to the zoning that it previously enjoyed when we had the zoning changed in 08. Uh, my client did not participate in the comprehensive zoning process, did not realize the consequence of the comprehensive zoning process, and accordingly the property was rezoned. I might also add that in looking at the staff comments in 08 when the property was zoned C2, um, staff again felt at that time that the property was in fact compatible with the 2025 plan and it felt that C2 zoning would be appropriate and compatible because of the infrastructure that is in the area, namely the road that's in front of it. So I would suggest to you uh, that if you're familiar with uh, this particular area, um, you're probably very familiar with the shopping center that's developing in the southwest quadrant of Fremo and I-10. You're probably familiar with the hospital and other properties that are developing in the northwest quadrant of Fremo and I-10. Uh, again, there is as fine a five-lane concrete road in that location as we have anywhere in this parish as it relates uh, to moving cars uh, through the area. I think you would also be interested to know that this property in question has a commercial use history. 
uh, many years ago. Uh, it was actually uh, a gas station called Gantz. Um, in more recent years, uh, it has been used for a variety of uses. Uh, currently, uh, it is being used in part as an office, but there's also three storage uh, buildings uh, on the site. Uh, I think you would also be interested to know that the parcel that abuts it on the east side, uh, I believe the name of it is Dean's uh, Truck and Auto Repair. Um, and again, that is consistent with what the type uses that we would see in an HC2 neighborhood. So I certainly respect the fact that there is a budding residential to the north and west. I would only tell you that that existing residential to the north and west has long lived in an environment where there has in fact been HC2 at this location. Uh, had this parcel been a virgin parcel and had no history of commercial use in the past, if this property did not have what I would consider to be an A-plus infrastructure, both road and intersection, if this property were not near uh, clearly budding commercial growth uh, along the service road, uh, McKinney uh, in particular, and also in the southwest quadrant where Slidell has the, the new Sterling Shopping Center, then you might have a different situation. So uh, we would uh, request that you consider recommending the HCT, HC2 zone to the council, in part because it restores the C2 zone that uh, the petitioners work for and codified in 208. But maybe more importantly, because if you take a look at the infrastructure, you take a look at the existing use and uses in the area, and the compatibility issue, I think it's very fair to say that this parcel, in fact, uh, can successfully enjoy HC2 status. If any of you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them at the appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this item? I'll close the floor, bring it back to the commissioners, Mr. Matthews. Well, two years ago, comprehensive rezoning this piece of property was recommended by staff I believe to be NC4 we recommended to the council that it be NC4 and the council decided in fact that it should be NC4 uh, two years ago the shopping center and the new Fremo uh, Boulevard were on the books and I believe everybody knew it uh, but we all decided that NC, uh, NC4 was the correct designation. If we're going to change all these things back to a much higher intensity of commercial use, then the staff, the commission, and the council, I mean, we've wasted our time. Uh, what has changed for this now to be highway commercial when all three bodies thought it should be NC4 two years ago. I don't think it has really changed. I think the, the shopping center, everybody knew was there. Fremo, everybody knew was going to be this, this boulevard. But we decided, and I don't remember exactly the reasoning, but it probably had something to do with the uh, residential nature of the, some of the budding properties. I just think uh, HC2 is too high. I think that it would be the high end of uh, C2. And I, I, I'm against it. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Uh, Ms. Casabon. Um, yeah, as far as the comprehensive rezoning, we, that was not cut into stone. I mean, we, we know as the parish has changed and some of the things that have changed and, and the buildings and the subdivisions and stuff that we knew this would not be, this is the way it is and it'll never change. Um, I'm, I know the staff has um, recommended denial um, with this particular area, but I am, um, I think the, the councilman is aware of, of what is in this area. Uh, I have no problem with it. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. We have a motion by Ms. Casabon to approve, seconded by Mr. Hines. You wish to speak, Mr. Hines? Okay. Yes, uh, I, would. yes I would. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Thank okay. You. Let me go back. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with this particular area, and uh, 
there, I, I don't think there's any anything else that you can do with this property. It's going to have to go into uh, heavy commercial uh, compared to any, everything else around it. And and the, the abutment of the of the subdivision, if I'm not mistaken, is on the back side of it anyway. So uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. You've been yeah. there. You, so thank you. Mr. Davis? I, I do have a question. Uh, Jeff? <clears throat> yes, sir. The one concern about I have about making this AC2 is that it's a pretty large piece of property. If you're looking at the plot, I see all these different lot numbers that you have on the plot itself. And in the rear, you have 7, 15, 16, and I, I believe that's 17 in Correct. the back. It's lot 7 through 17 consecutively. Is that what that is? <clears throat> 7 through Compri 17 in the back? Yes, sir. You know, I really wouldn't have a problem doing HC2 on the front lots, 8, 14, 9, 10, 11, 13, and 12, if everybody can look at that. Instead of just granting the entire 1.6 acres, and, and bear with me on this, if you look at that cross-sectional area from lots 8 to 14, which we could allow HC2, it's approximately the same size of that lot that, that uh, across the street is going to be that new racetrack. That's just something to think about. Let's say. Yeah, if I could, I, I know that we didn't have anyone speak from the public, but I'd hope to have a chance to either give some rebuttal or make some further remarks. Would it be appropriate if I did that now? Uh, I would think that it would be, yes. It, to the to the total of 10 minutes. Okay, well, I, don't, I hope I won't need 10 minutes. But no, 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 I, I, If time. I could, I would like to address some of Mr. Matthews' remarks, which I understand and respect, but I guess a couple of things that maybe I think would be important to him as it relates to the timeline. Um, the property was zoned C2 in 08. A comprehensive rezoning was done in 09, which is five years ago. Since that time, what has happened in that area, the Fremo interchange has been constructed, completed, and opened. The, um, I'm going to refer to it as the Slidell Specialty Hospital for not knowing the exact name of that facility, but has been constructed and completed and opened on McKinney. And the shopping center was not only not constructed, but I think many feared could be a graveyard for the city of Slidell. I don't say that to be argumentative. I say that you asked what has changed. I would suggest to you that at the time the recommendation was made, um, I think for one thing, there was so much property that was being zoned that unless the property owner stood up and gave you some things to think about, it was often difficult to focus on each parcel. But I would also say that because of the absence of the interchange, the absence of the other commerce that I'm referring to, Maybe at that point in time, NC4 seemed appropriate. I would only suggest to you that those things have occurred since 09, and I think does make it at least reasonable to consider HC2. Also, if you look at the depth of some of the HC2 to the east and even beyond the abutting parcels along McKinney, um, I would suggest to you that that whole area is likely destined to go commercial for the very reasons that Mr. Hines discussed because of the infrastructure and the trend that's already begun at that location. Um, Mr. Manella. Yeah, I, I would concur with Mr. Shane's comments, and, and I have the greatest respect for Mr. Matthews. To the same, I don't live far from that area, and when they put in the Fremo interchange, um, having talked to numerous business people, residents, mm -hmm. I myself was president of one of the largest homeowners associations, so have a great empathy for what's happening. It was assumed that Fremo would become another Gauze Boulevard in Slidell, that everything across would become commercial in time in an appropriate sequence, and just as the Fremo shopping area kind of reminds me of what transpired to 1088, a lot of delays, a lot of apprehension through a financial crisis that the whole country and the world went through, and now it's fully being developed. On the west side, I guess, as you approach the town of Slidell, down Fremo, which is the direction this is coming off of the interstate, it's the entrance to Slidell. It's moving from residential to commercial. A lot of the old uh, homes, uh, the owners are selling them and slowly but surely coming into the Slidell as well as going towards Military Road on the other side. I think it's appropriate. 
I think it's consistent with the growth that's happening and in a controlled manner, and, it, and that parcel's just next, if you will, in the controlled parcel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mel. Mr. Matthews. Um, while I fully appreciate that the comprehensive rezoning is not chiseled in, in stone, um, most of what we have changed from that is because either clear errors in, in what we did, and like anything, we're people and we made errors, or where the complexion has changed to a significant degree that it cries out for either commercial or residential or something like that that it, we didn't do in the comprehensive rezoning. Uh, I, I beg to differ with Mr. Shane. Uh, I knew about that shopping center. Uh, when it was going to be built, no one knew, but it was coming. Uh, I knew about Fremo. Uh, when the interchange opened, I, I didn't know at the time, but it was clear uh, that Fremo was going to be an interchange and it was going to be open. So I really don't think that a great deal has changed here. Now, the, the argument that this needs to be commercial, I have no problem with that, and it does. There's a great deal of neighboring property uh, that is in C4. Um, should we, at this point, change it all? Uh, I don't think. Uh, I think the fact that it is abutting at, uh, on two sides, A4, uh, is, is a problem. Uh, we don't generally put highway commercial uh, next to residential if we can help it. Uh, and I, I really think uh, Jimmy might have had an idea. The front part might be HC2 and the rear part uh, NC4. That would at least put something of a, of a buffer on one side to all of that A4. Uh, I disagree that this should be changed to HC2. I think it is way too intense, and I agree with the staff. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Uh, just a, a comment. That, uh, some of this is also in, in the city of Slidell. That's the reason there, you may not see uh, some of the uh, zoning designations, but uh, this area has continued to grow, and uh, I think it's going to continue to grow just like uh, Mr. Manella said. So, uh, I, you know, whether it's NC4, HC2, HC2 right now today may be a little bit uh, intense, but uh, maybe a year or two years from now, maybe it would be very appropriate. But uh, I certainly understand your, your comments, Bill. Mr. Hines. Yes, sir. Uh, I would I would make a motion that we, we have, that we have a motion and a second to approve. Oh, you don't got them? Okay, I'm sorry. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, HC2 uh, zoning designation. On uh, zoning case 1406-046, uh, please vote. Motion carries uh, eight to two. Thank you. Thank you. Item five, exist, uh, zoning case 14-06-047. The existing zoning is A4, single family residential. The proposed zoning is AT1 Animal Training Housing District. It's 4.46 acres. The petitioner is Tory Gidry. The owner is Tory Gidry. Parcel located on the north side of Herwig Bluff Road, east of Military Road, being 41449 Herwig Bluff Road, Slide L, Ward 8, District 9. Staff. The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses and may also include agricultural and open space uses. The requested zoning change to AT1 would allow for the property to be de developed with horse riding and animal training facility, commercial stables, and commercial kennels. Staff does not have any objection to the request, considering that the property is almost five acres in size and there's a 100-foot buffer between the abutting residential subdiv subdivision to the rear of the subject site. At this time, staff would like to recommend approval. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Please state your name. Good evening. I'm Tori Gidry, the owner of the property, and I'm going to read so I don't get off task here. Um, 
I have lived at 41449 Howard Bluff with six and a half acres outside of the city limits for four years. We've significantly improved the property since making it our home, including clearing land, dug two ponds, constructed an eight stall barn, and a pool. We applied for and obtained all required permits for all the work and improvements that we had made to our property. Several farm animals reside on our land and have done so for four years. We just fenced the front property line that faces the bluffs with a beautiful pasture. On, new on numerous occasions, I have been asked if we provide riding lessons by different individuals, include several residents of the bluffs, which brings me here today. I went to the St. Tammany Parish Permits Office and asked if I could obtain a permit to provide horse riding lessons. The parish representatives told me that the St. Tammany Parish no longer issues special use or conditional use permits since the adoption of the Unified Development Code. I was told I needed to rezone the portion of my property that would be used for that purpose from its current A4 zoning to AT1 Animal Training District, Animal Training Housing District, and that I needed to get Councilman Jean Belsara's approval before any further action could be taken. After speaking with Mr. Belsario, he said we needed to meet with Helen Lambert, the Assistant Zoning Director, and a staff member. We met, and Ms. Lambert and the staff, uh, they agreed on the proposed rezoning and that would not cause any diminutive problems for any surrounding areas. After this meeting and receiving the support from Mr. Bersaria, I, re I re um, paid for the required fees and applied for rezoning. What I'm asking for today is to rezone a portion of my land, 4.46 acres, to allow me to provide horse riding le lessons, therapeutic equine therapy for the disabled, and any related activity with the farm animals. Um, I am not trying to do commercial kennel. There's no intent to do commercial kennels. Um, and I am here to answer any other questions that y'all have. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Gidry. Let's see if there's anyone else. And I also uh, have pictures of the property. I don't know if I'm allowed to present that or not, but yeah. it's the, the highlighted portion is what's going to be rezoned in, in the view of my property. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see if there's anyone else that wish to uh, speak on this. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak in favor of this zoning change? Okay. Anyone else in the audience wish to uh, speak in opposition? Yes. Please come forward. State your name. Yeah, my name is uh, Daniel J. Ware. I'm the president of the Bluffs Home Homeowners Association. And uh, I actually got notice of this about uh, a little over 10 days ago. Um, I probably received constructive notice by publication somehow before that. But uh, anyway, uh, I put it before a board and I also... Uh, Talk to Gene Belisario about it, and uh, our association is against this project. Um, com converting it to AT1, which is a commercial uh, uh, zoning, it, it's, it's, the, the property is completely surrounded by um, residential single family. And uh, I, I think this is just kind of a slippery slope to, uh, you know, well, it, it, give, it gives them the right to, to create a uh, commercial enterprise on the property. Um, when I talked to Gene Bellasario on how to oppose this, he suggested I, I uh, submit a petition signed by all concerned uh, uh, voting residents, and uh, I submitted a, a, I circulated a petition, and I have, uh, I have it signed by 105 members of not only of our community, but of uh, Crossgates and all of, their, all of the surrounding neighbors of Miss Goodry. And I'm submitting that to the board for part of the record. Um, it, it, the uh, proposed use is inconsistent with the existing use it, uh, of uh, all surrounding properties by permitting a commercial enterprise in the center, center of a residential area. Additionally, the, it's my opinion that the proposed change will result in a diminution in market value of our homes. While I have no, no hard evidence of this, um, I have discussed it with several appraisers who uh, indicated that uh, it could possibly have an adverse effect, but it would take a, a, a rather expensive market study to uh, come up with uh, you know, a definitive opinion. There's no precedence for such a change in the Ninth District. Uh, we have one AT uh, zoned uh, uh, parcel, and that belongs to uh, uh, Lewis's feed and I'm sorry. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis's feet and stables on Pearl Road. Now that facility existed before any other development was made in the area. It's been a long established uh, uh, business. Um, 
The other thing is that two of the individuals who have signed our petition to change are experienced and licensed builders, Ray Beck and Chris Woody, who both agree that it would have adverse consequences on our development. Um, Bluff Road, the other objection we have is that Bluff Road right now is falling apart. I don't know if any of you have driven on it, but it, it is a, a pot, potholed mess right now. And um, I realize that, that our development has 112 households and we are contributing to that pothole mess. The thing is, why make it worse? However, we pay a tremendous amount of taxes, okay? The, 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 uh, the, the, the low end uh, price of a home in our development is around 300,000. The high end is over a million. My, my, uh, my, uh, my annual taxes are over uh, $7,000 a year, okay? And I don't get any benefit from any of, um, any of the road taxes. Neither does, does any of the 112 households in our development because we have to pay for the repairs of our own two and a half miles of road and two and a half miles of storm sewage. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's the end of my argument. Um, I, I don't know where we can go from here, but uh, I just wanna get on the record along with, uh, I, I spent 10 days getting all these signatures and uh, I just want to let you all know that uh, we are opposed to it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Webb. Any questions? Not right now. All right. Uh, anyone else in the audience wish to speak against the proposal of changing to AT1? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Terry Kennedy is my name. And I live in Crossgates. The only thing I would want to re-emphasizes the fact that most of what uh, they had just discussed had to do with um, the bluffs. But we in Crossgates feel the same way. It's, it's kind of hard to imagine how somebody would agree to change an area that is 100% residential, single family, into a commercial. Because what's Commercial today, talking about a few people riding horses is one thing, but when you change that designation, you've opened the floodgates for whatever might happen afterwards. So as a result, I, I just want to make the point that, that the residents of Crossgates are also opposed to this commercial designation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we don't have a speaker card from you, so if you will, please get one and complete it and turn it into staff. Okay. Okay. Just just a moment. We'll have rebuttal. Yes, ma'am. Hi. I'm Tony Felizzi, and we've lived at the end of this two-lane road for 60 years. And to introduce commercial is crazy. I could actually have a swamp tour right there on the river. And, you know, the six of us at the dead end of this road already impacted when an 18-wheeler can't figure out where he's supposed to be, and then he busts down one gate or somebody else's gate. I mean, to add horse trailers or any more traffic on Herwig Bluff Road is a horrifying thing. I mean, the kids on, Hor on Herwig Bluff Road can't even go out in the street, well, not the street, but they can't even go in their front yards. I spoke to one resident. He said he's afraid to get his mail. I, they're going like at least 40 miles an hour. I don't know if it's possible to put speed bumps on the road. That's not possible. Uh, I don't the know. Is in, in the his situation is, you know, when I moved there, all of Gauze was a gravel road. Right. Okay. Nice that we got blacktop. The blacktop got ruined. But... Uh, commercial where we live, all of the adjacent uh, residents, homeowners, are opposed to this. We can't find anything beneficial to it. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak against? Yes, sir. My name is Terry Hemelt. I'm a, a resident of the Bluffs as well. Uh, I oppose this as well for the, all the reasons everybody's already said. I'm not going to reiterate everything that was said, but I did want to point out also in the AT1 
uh, definition, it says that a mi maximum building size could be 40,000 square feet and 35 feet high. Uh, clearly, this sort of structure doesn't belong in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Uh, if anybody, I'm, I'm not sure what the picture is that uh, Tori passed around, but I do have a Google picture of the subdivision and the track of land that they're trying to turn into commercial. But uh, the area really can't handle big trailers and, and, and other types of uh, more commercial sort of stuff going on back there. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. We don't have a speaker card on you either, okay. so if you will, com complete one and, and turn it in. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak against? Okay, we're going to go to, uh, yes, ma'am. My name is Sandra Holman, and I live right across the street from uh, the Gidrys, and I know them. You know, they're good people, but I'm not for the fact of them rezoning any part of their property, which possibly could affect mine. And I've also had two incidents uh, where people are admiring what they've done, which is good. I grew up with horses and cows, but they were never on my property. My father had them somewhere else. And uh, we've had to replace our gate twice. You know, because we're right in the curve. And in fact, right now, the sign for um, showing that it's a curve in the road, it's laying flat because someone ran over it again. And I just want to say that I am against it and my husband also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Please complete a card and turn it into staff. Anyone else in the audience wish to, to speak against this? All right, we're going to move to the rebuttal portion of this uh, case. Ms. Gidry, you wish to? Um, they did go around getting a petition signed in which they were misrepresenting um, what I was doing. They were stating that I was going to be providing rodeos and um, uh, I could have a concrete plan. I have, yeah. I have signatures. Minute. I have signatures have of people who've speech. actually signed theirs, who signed their petition and also signed mine as well. They got as many voters in each household. I have residents of the bluffs in each home. Um, as far as the builder, Witty, his wife signed my petition. I can't vouch for him. Um, they, uh, and, and as far as signs being down or potholes in the road, that's, that's nothing to do with me here today. Um, the sign getting knocked down in front of Ms. Holman's house, that was an elderly man whom the family came and repaired it or offered to repair it, as my understanding, had nothing to do. Everything's being directed, any issues that they're having, um, because they pay a lot in property tax and because they live in a gated community, that's their choice. I am outside of city limits, I'm not in Crossgates neighborhood, and I'm not in the bluffs. Um, I do not intend, I have horses that live on my property. I do not drag trailers. I do not do any of the things that they're stating. So, um, oh, um, here's the petition that I have. And I have um, also, I have an email that Dan Weir um, had sent out to people and the way he stated in his email that I have a commercial, um, it, he worded it commercial animal training facility uh, or animal training housing district in which my understanding after speaking with the assessor, um, J.B. Powell, uh, an assessor there, um, that this is not a commercial zoning. It has a commercial use within it. Um, but it is not going to affect them by having a commercial zone in it. That's my understanding, and as also what he has said, that is not falling, the AT1 does not fall under the commercial zones. Th that's all I understand it as. Um, but I felt like that was being misrepresented to um, people by uh, basically putting negative in their minds of what I was doing by stating all these commercial facts. Um, also, Ms. Holman's daughter posted on Facebook um, that we're trying to get our neighborhoods rezoned 
um, that I'm trying to rezone all of the neighborhoods and uh, that will, they'll all be com considered commercial property and that it can affect, it can affect people's property values. Um, and I'm not doing it for the right motives. Number one, they have no, I've spoken with um, appraisers as well, and they said there's no impact. I have lived next to a trailer park. I have put up a six-foot fence. They had drugs. They had forts and everything else. If they want to fix anything, there's a trailer park that I'm attached to. You know, So I have only improved this property, and I do not intend to hurt anyone. And there is no – I live here. This isn't – I'm not trying to create – commercial um, stables. So I just, that's all I have. But here is the email from um, Jean Belsario and also um, the Holman Daughter uh, Facebook post. I felt is very misleading to people and got people on board with them by misrepresenting. And um, also, there's uh, lots of negative things that I've heard. And if anyone would like to ask questions about it, you know, even the outside people here, I don't know how it works. But there's so many rumors. And I guess when this comes to a board, this is when all this stuff comes out. But it's, it's actually very upsetting. But I, I can't. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, on the against side rebuttal. Yes, sir. First of all, my petition speaks for itself. I made no representations about how the property was going to use. I merely addressed the, uh, the designation of the property as uh, an animal training uh, commercial facility. Um, in terms of it not being commercial, um, I have a copy of Section 5.33 of the United Development Code, Volume 1, AT1 Animal Training Housing District. It says, the purpose of this district is to provide for the location of a large-scale animal-related functions. Then it says, under permitted uses, horse riding, animal training, commercial stables, and commercial kennels. Okay? That's a business. So in, in terms of calling it commercial, I'm not, I don't think I'm misrepresenting it. When I called Gene Bellasario on tel by the telephone uh, 10 days ago, he told me it was commercial. And then uh, suddenly he's sending out emails to uh, people, not in my development, but in uh, Crossgates, telling them that it's not commercial. Well, according to the, uh, the ordinance, as I read it, it is. Now, I have, I have not made any representations about what she intends to do on her property, and I challenge all of you to read my petition. My petition is very neutral in that regard. So that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in the rebuttal phase? We've got about three minutes. Terry Hemount again. Just make one other comment. Um, you know, even if the Guidry's intentions are completely innocent at this point, it's a slippery slope. We don't know what their situation is going to be in three or four years from now. Maybe they need to make more money some kind of way and they expand their commercial venture. Uh, or they sell the property to somebody else, and once it's rezoned, somebody else comes in and, and, and creates a, a monstrosity in our neighborhood. So uh, just saying, I want to consider those things as well. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Terry say. Stevens, 725 Dove Park Road. Um, I can appreciate what the owner wants to do with her property, and I can appreciate certainly what the residents don't want her to do with that property. And part of the problem that seems to happen over and over in the parish is because it's so cut and dried and conditional use permits are not allowed anymore, in a case like hers, you might have been able to allow her to do what she wanted to do in a very limited sense, and it'd be perfectly acceptable, and if she were ever to sell her property in the future, it would revert back to the underlying zoning. There's great benefit in that, so that the parish can move forward in certain ways, but it doesn't fundamentally change the, the zoning that's existing. In her particular case, if her property, and this, this is the truth. If her property is rezoned and kennels are allowed, these people can't stop it. And that's really not fair to them because the, it's an approved use if you change this zoning. So with this issue and other issues that are going to come up before you tonight and other issues that have come up in the past, the past, 
I would urge you to reconsider conditional use permits because there is great value in those. Ms. Stevens, I believe we have a, a card from you on another case. Yes, you do. Okay. All right. All right. Anyone else wish to speak against on this? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Pardon? Uh, well, right now we're in, in the rebuttal on the against, and there's only about a minute and a half left. Okay. Is there anyone else? Wish to speak against? We still had some time left on the on the uh, far side. Okay. All right. If no one else wishes to speak against, uh, there was a minute and twenty some seconds on the far side. So I will recognize you and and please fill out a uh, a card. My name's Amanda Fisher. Um, I don't live in y'all's neighborhood. I, I don't. Um, but I, I heard someone say, who is this going to benefit? I was a brain injury specialist for three years, and one of our very therapeutic things that we did was we did horseback riding. And it was amazingly therapeutic to these people, um, from children to grown adults. One of the sad things that I've seen happen recently is uh, we had – Three big ranches that did therapeutic riding, therapeutic riding in St. Tammany Parish, two of the three are gone, okay? Um, facilities like this, you know, I can understand how they wouldn't want it. And like Terry said, the conditional, you know, like kennels, therapeutic riding. Therapeutic riding, it really does actually have a very huge benefit to this entire populace, and they don't have a voice. You're not going to have people in here who are disabled or uh, brain injured or whatever standing up saying, I really want to do that. This is what I live for every week. And I just wanted to put that towards y'all because it does benefit someone other than this lady. So. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Webb, we are about. Where? Where? Excuse me. You still had just a few seconds left on, on uh, um, Someone had mentioned a deed restriction on kennels. I'm not opposed to looking into that. I don't know anything about it, but I'm not trying to do kennels. <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right. Do you have any rebuttal from what uh, Ms. Fisher had to say? Well, the, the, the oral intent of the uh, homeowner is, is, is not enforceable by law. You know, in, in any agreement regarding the use of land has to be in writing in or, or, order to be enforceable. Um, I, I believe this is a side issue. Uh, it, it's an issue that's unrelated to the zoning issue. And I think the zoning issue is what is key here. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hand, um, if she would do a, uh, a deed restriction on the uh, not having Let's kennels. Let's talk about that. How would that need to be handled? Well, deed restrictions are not enforced by the uh, parish of St. Tammany. However, deed restrictions are usually done in favor of specific groups of people, whether it be abutting neighbors or neighborhoods, uh, who then can enforce the deed restrictions. However, as I said before, the parish does not get involved in the actual enforcement of it. Uh, the parish would, though, recognize a deed restriction on the property. So if this property were deed restricted to, uh, to prevent kennels, it would go with the property. Even in the future, uh, kennels could not go at that site. The parish would not issue a permit for a kennel at that site considering the deed restriction. Okay. All right. Nobody said kennels. Sure okay. Uh, Mr. Weir, I believe, mentioned it, uh, it. and, and the, the, the word kennels uh -oh. came up, okay? And uh, Ms. Guidry said that she would be willing to put a deed restriction so that there wouldn't be any kennels. So that, that would kind of satisfy whoever brought up the word kennels, whether it was at this meeting or uh, in discussion with uh, other folks, okay? So we've had both sides speak, and I want to close the, the floor to the public and bring it back to the commission. Ms. Casabon. Yes, um, and listening to both sides, I was 
totally against this because my understanding with so many people here from the Bluffs and Crossgate that I was under the impression that she is within these subdivisions, which I can totally say if it was deed restricted or I would never put anything like this in, into a subdivision. Now after listening and hearing that her property is outside these, it, it seems like we're penalizing her for having property outside the limits um, and I feel that she is caught, as you say, I am, I am a proponent of the conditional use and in cases like this where, but I fully understand, I would not, you've got to have some restriction, and that's what the conditional use did, but anyway, the restriction, and I have written down that I was going to ask her if she would deed restrict that it, you can, with her property and it is filed in court along with the title of the property that um, it would only be a training facility and you and if I'm not mistaken you can put whatever restrictions on there as far as size buildings am I correct you you can stipulate it's kind of like the conditional use under these conditions we don't have anything to do with it but it is filed in or at the courthouse and it is on and in the event that she decides to sell this is the only thing that could go with that property this is what that she could do with the property the only thing she could do with it um i d i don't know i guess i need a few more questions could i ask you a few more questions when you say training facility would you actually be taking animals and training them for riders or you're teaching people to ride teaching people to ride how to ride how to ride it falls under that category I how guess many is. people would you have at one time because you're not going to have the size facility right and the, and something else with the, the building size I don't feel I don't think is um, actually for my size property anyway I only have four acres that are going to be rezoned and to have a building and what they're saying these large infrastructures correct. that didn't even fall into my my size category correct uh, so it couldn't be there is what I'm saying their fear right. of a building couldn't go there um, as many kids would be there would probably be one to two possibly I mean I could throw out there so three out the, the the driving they're concerned about their roads and and the amount of people that would be traveling on the road i, the I have a house i have a half a million dollar pool i entertain on the weekends i have probably 20 or 30 dollars well, cars there in, i'm trying to get a <laughs> but feel i'm saying that i'm not trying, afraid of traffic i'm trying to get a feel for what you're trying to do mainly for my benefit but also that it's also stated publicly right. what um so you're looking at teaching people to ride maybe and there the needs most. to be a volunteer with the handicap. There has to be a volunteer <clears throat> that walks on each side of the disabled. So you're trying. So you're trying to do this facility as a therapeutic. That's what I'm trying to. Figure it it, it out. can be riding lessons for your granddaughter who wants okay. to ride, or it can or be for the therapeutic per por okay. portion of it as and well. And those are certain guidelines that that she would have to follow. I have to get to, a license. To, yes, and, in yeah. order to do that. Um, I did not realize again that this was where you were headed as far as as that goes. Um, I understand the concerns, but I do not see this as, trust me, a, a money-making commercial, what she's trying to do um, w with this. It, it's not like you're going to have, and that's what I wanted to find out, how many people and I have exactly a what you job. wanted to do with this. Um, I own a business in Metairie. I have a full-time job. My husband builds pools. This is a dream hobby to help children. Okay. So this is... Um, making it a little bit clearer to me that um, it, it's not within these subdivisions, that she is outside. Um, th but I do feel that for the people's comfort, they do need some um, a comfort zone on the property that they're correct. Once we rezone this and we don't have any restrictions on it, we can't put restrictions on it because it will just be under the, a, uh, the animal training district or whatever and you are allowed to do whatever it's in there if you if you did sell it it could become kind i understand that i think that you that i would feel more comfortable if we could um or you look into because about the deed restricted uh that exactly kind of what you're going to do and this is the only thing that you're going to do with this property well, I'm Even hearing the muffle that that's it. what that's, I'm hearing the muffle back here. That's not what's going to make them happy. They're concerned it, I'm about not commercial. Worried about, I, I'm worried about 
what's going on I, on this property. Yes, ma'am. And that would, if you're willing to do it, I have I have that problem too. I, I don't think this is the type of neighborhood that the kennels would be appropriate for. Mm -hmm. But once you understand, once we rezone this, they would be allowed there. I understand and that. And so you end up, it doesn't work, you sell I it, somebody goes, oh, I can put a kennel here, you know, and that's not conducive to, right. you know, these neighborhoods because you are that close to them, not necessarily in them, but you are that close to them. And that's where I stand. I'd like to see some kind of deed restricted. Okay. Uh, Mr. Willie. Uh, yeah. Uh, she's. I, I notice it's all coming from A4 zoning, and but she has a very large lot size in this A4 zoning, six acres or so. Uh, the surrounding abutting properties, on this, especially the east and west sides, are they small lots or are they large parcels as, as such as yours or, or what? Because um, I'm not seeing any. Uh, what's my um, We've got a, a I believe everyone has large parcels except for the bluffs, which is the the that's south the, that's side. South of me, yeah. South I'm of talking me. about east and west mostly, you know. Um, there's a trailer park, is several acres, and, and then, then there's a looks like a large side. farm to your east side or whatever. And on the west side on Herwood Road, there's a uh, trailer park. Yeah. Okay. She's not in this. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Miss Willie? Okay. Now, how is that trailer park zoned? Well, I mean, that's not. Just, oh, okay. okay. We're, the commission's got it back right now, okay? Mr. Matthews. Um, staff, correct me if I'm wrong. She she is allowed in the A4 designation to have the horses that she currently has on her property. Is that, is that true? Correct. Household correct. agricultural is uh, permitted. Okay. Uh, how many horses is she allowed on the ho household agriculture? We don't have no minimum or maximum number. Okay. Basically, they have to be housed properly, so animal services would determine the maximum number okay. of horses she so, can So, I mean, have. she could have 10, 12 horses, possibly. If it's her personal horses, her, per, her okay. own pets, yes. Okay, so w we're not talking about having horses or not having horses. Uh, what Correct. we're talking about is whether there would be people coming to her property to ride her horses commercially or for a fee. Correct. Okay. Uh, I don't understand how that is going to change the character of the neighborhood across the street um, by allowing her to have a few people, and she could be more than a few, uh, to be on her property to, uh, to ride her horses. Uh, if she did it for free, she could do that. Uh, if she <coughs> charges them, it becomes the a a AT1 use. Um, and there's only four things she can do on AT1. That's horse riding or animal training, and I think both of those would be what she would be involved in. A commercial stable, um, that would just mean that she would have other people's horses <coughs> at her property um, and uh, charging them for it. Uh, she could have the same number of horses if she wasn't charging, if she owned them. Uh, uh, commercial kennels, that's the only fly in the ointment, it appears. I don't know whether having a commercial kennel or a large 10 or 12 horse stable for her personal use, I don't see <laughs> that one is, is better than the other uh, or more detrimental to the surrounding properties than the other. Um, the concern that this is now going to be commercial property I, I, I really don't see that concern either. First of all, while AT1 allows some, as it is states here, commercial use, this is an A designation, which is a residential more designation, uh, and it limits what the commercial can be to very, very small amount of things, only four. Uh, if the people are concerned that because this, an AT1, uh, will mean the property next door will become an HC2. Uh, no, they have to come back to us before they go there. And just because next door, and as you've heard this tonight, uh, just because next door is NC doesn't mean that it's going to be highway commercial. 
And what we have here, there's nothing about this property that would lead it to, to go to a highway commercial. Um, I just don't see what, what the furor is. Uh, she has horses now. She's going to continue to have horses. The only difference is that there will be people that will be paying her to ride her horses. I don't think there's going to be any more trailers. Uh, she doesn't appear she's going to be moving her horses in and out a lot. Uh, she's not going to be bringing horses in all the time. It's going to be her horses. Uh, this seems like a, 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 a good thing for people that want to ride horses. The therapeutic uh, aspect of this is, is also, I think, very commendable. And I, uh, I would recommend us doing this, and I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Matthews to approve. We have a second by Mr. Hines. Okay, uh, Jimmy? Yes, Ms. Gidrid. Uh, how many horses do you have now? I have three large horses and two ponies, so five. Do you intend on getting more? I have an eight-stall barn, so my maximum, if I gained more, which I have a man trying to donate a horse for the therapeutic lessons, I could only, you know, gain three to house them safely. I mean, I'm not trying to overpopulate and have as many animals as I can fit in there, you know? Yeah. Okay, and uh, a question for staff. Uh, Ms. Gidry came to you, obviously, and, and Ms. Gidry came to you and talked to you about this, and this is why you're making a recommendation to approve, correct? correct? Okay, I don't have a problem with it. Mr. Manella. Ms. Gidry, question. Yes, sir. Did both the Bluffs Homeowners Association and Crossgates Homeowners Association ask to meet with you in their public meetings? No, sir. Did you ever present to all of the petitioners what your intentions were? To the petitioners that they have signed? Yes, in a public in a public meeting, no, this sir. commission very often I tried to um, asked for any type you have tensions to please to, to discuss that. No, sir. That those opportunities were never afforded to you. No, sir. Okay, Mr. Ware, you were you represented to us <clears throat> that you had the approval of your association as a board. To not, of the no, you didn't say your board. The approval of the association. So you had a meeting with your association within the last 10 days? I, I, had, a, I, had, I had a meeting by email with my board. Okay, now board, so now association, bylaws, association. Mr. Ware, would you listen to me, please? All right. So you represented that you met with your association. Now you're changing it that I met with my board. Now you're saying you had a meeting via email. So in the bluffs, in your bylaws, it specifically states that you are permitted to vote as a member of the association via email? Yes. It does. Yes. It was written. There, there, there is there is no prohibition against it. I asked specifically if it was addressed expressly in your bylaws that emails. We don't have bylaws. All we have are articles of incorporation that grant corporate powers to the board, and the board has the ability to act okay. uh, by a majority vote. We do not have bylaws. You also stated, and it was stated by various people in opposition, that. You're concerned as to the traffic that this enterprise might bring? Right. Okay. Or is capable of bringing. You know, I, I understand what, you know, that how she many says movements, she... How many movements per day would you estimate the bluff subdivision creates on Herwig Bluff? Hundreds. How many? Hundreds. Let's guess. 122 homes, at least eight, just for people going in, 1,000 moves a day. How many moves could a possible horse training facility create a thousand moves per day no okay lastly I have great concern as you all do if kennels were put on here for noise well I, concerns, I'm, I'm concerned I'm concerned about commercial stables as well as I think mr. Matthews eloquently put it if Miss Gidry adds three more horses are you, your concern is relative to trailer movement, to noise? Trailer movement, to, to uh, possible you know, odors coming from the property. I don't know how many animals she plans on, on boarding over there. And there's no, there's no, control, that, there's no control on that in terms of, uh, in terms of AT1. No control from a? From a number standpoint. There is, there is from a... From a uh, a square square footage and height of building from a compliance yeah and in terms in terms of uh, deed restrictions if I may address that 
um, we would not have standing to enforce a deed restriction unless we were that, all signatories that was, that was to not, it. That was not the, the question. Mr. Well, well the I, 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 right I, he's got the floor. Okay. Right all right. Okay. Well, my, my last point is regarding deed restrictions. If, and again, this goes back to, I'm not speaking for the whole commission, but we've been very consistent on having community meetings to, to vent, to also bring out concerns, you know, a, Potential building was a concern, which is not applicable. Kennels were a concern, which Ms. Guidry said that that's not her interest. That affords, and I'll defer to council, a potential to put together a deed restriction that a homeowners association could enforce. That's correct, and it's it's up to the individual property owner uh, to determine if she so wishes to place a deed restriction. We don't require deed restrictions. Uh, and we also don't enforce deed restrictions, but if the deed restriction is written in favor of the homeowners association or any member of the homeowners association, it can then be subsequently enforced by any member or the association themselves. Would that be consistent with bylaws in a subdivision or, or um, uh, the restrictions within a subdivision? It, it has the same effect. Uh, as a restriction within a subdivision. Now we have, we have, we have building and use restrictions of record, okay? Right, and this and would I, be of record. It's recorded at the courthouse. So if Ms. Uh, Ms. Torrey decided that she was gonna put a deed restriction on it, it would have to be recorded at the courthouse and the recordation would be in favor of those who are referenced within the, the restriction itself. And any subsequent sale of that property, it goes with the property. So if she were to sell the property, someone else could come in, uh, the new purchaser, that deed restriction stays in place. If she said no kennels, no kennels will ever be on that property. So, so, so do, they do they name the parties who are beneficiaries of this restriction? That's correct. Okay, so, so other than the bluffs, what about her neighbors who are objecting? Uh, would they have to name they can be them? be named as well. That's up to her whenever she does the okay. deed restriction well, I, I and her neighbors. It, it would okay. be consistent, too, in the bluffs. You have restrictive covenants. Yes. Minimum square footage. Right. And, and the rest. It would act in the same principle as that would, that it would be enforceable. It would name the beneficiaries. If, if the concern is what I think we're hearing addressed, kennels in a size of a building, uh, the restriction of the property would restrict the horses. I think we've ruled out the fact of additional traffic given the amount of traffic the bluffs had brought down Herwig Bluff. Um, if, if those are the true, true concerns relative to the property. So it would all depend on her willingness to execute such an instrument. <coughs> yeah, it, it, it's the landowner's the end of landowner's option. Again, so so once the zoning is changed, then the ball is in her court whether or not she wants to do it or not. Yep. And that, in essence, is why we always recommend before you come in front of this commission you would work out issues. Because once it's placed in front of this commission, oh. short of postponing it, for giving you that opportunity, we would vote on it, and it would be up to the landowner to decide whether or not any restrictions would be placed. Well, I, I, I was not given an opportunity to make, make a voice in this, this, uh, this issue. I mean, she, she didn't approach any, anybody. So, uh, you know, the, the only reason I, the, the only way I got notified was that one of her neighbors called me and said, are you aware of what's going on? Okay. There was a, you know, there was a sign Thank posted. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna go into all, all the constructive notice issues. Okay, we, uh, finish with the public, Mr. Drum. Hi, uh, Mr. Ware. How long has, uh, excuse me, Miss uh, Tory, yes. Miss Tory, been on that piece of property? I don't know, three or four years. Four years. Has anybody made any complaints about noises or animal smells or anything? Oh, well, we've we've had uh, one of her, one of her animals escaped and trampled down some of our plants on our, uh, you know, on our island but it was no big deal i mean we caught the pig and brought it back on our property yeah but see you did mention a little while ago that there's going to be a lot of smells animal smells well that's what i'm like that's that. what i'm worried about if yeah, it's but expanded have you smelt any in the last three or four years while she's been there i don't live that far away 
You'll have to talk to her close neighbors. I, I, I don't have any complaints I've, about it. I've owned horses, and I've worked on barns, and I've mucked out stalls and all that, and believe me, you can smell it if it's a hot day and the wind is blowing. So there have been hot days and there have been wind blowing, but you haven't made any complaints about any of that, right? I, I have received none from the bluffs. Now, that, whether, or not her, whether or not her neighbors, you know, whether or not her neighbors have, have had problems, I don't know. But have you received any notices or anything? Yes, sir. Uh, the road, the bluff, the, what is it, this? Uh, Herring Bluff Road. Bluff, bluff Road, yes. Was that road damaged before she moved in? It's, it's a parish road. It, it's, 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 a, it's a parish road that has uh, received a lot of traffic, and, and it's, it's been worse <laughs> since she moved in, but I can't attribute it to her. I, I, I'm going to have to say that uh, we, have, we have about five more households in there. We, we've had tr more trucks, you know, with uh, sand and gravel and construction and equipment coming in and out. Okay. But, it, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's a mess. However, and the property damage that was done, was that done by anything pertaining to her, like uh, construction equipment, or was that done by it people was, being lost, like that 18-wheeler that... Uh, well, we had, we had an 18-wheeler that was lost that did about $400 worth of damage, and I, I don't know where he came from. He, did, he didn't belong where he were. It was a, it was a trailer. Okay, so, so in other words, she really hasn't damaged anything. She hasn't smelled up anything. And you're concerned that she might damage something, and she might smell up something. Well, my, my concern is setting a precedent, is, is, is establishing a commercial, commercial use for this property that can be expanded in the future. And it passes with title. Yeah, well, the only thing is, everything that she could do right now without asking permission, she can still so, teach children how to ride a horse and just say it's, so, so then why? Yeah, you know, without profit. So, so, I mean, so, 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 why change it? That's true. But I mean, because the parish requires an occupational. Right. You know, if, if she wanted, if she wanted to make it really commercial, if she wanted to add another barn, or she wanted to do something like that to make it a commercial business, she'd have to come here. No, she would. No, she wouldn't. According, according to the, according to the. Uh, According to the Unified Development Code, she can build up to 40,000 square feet of building space and up to 35 feet high. She's still got to get permission to do it. She She's got to get a building permit, but she doesn't need to change her zoning. She doesn't have the property for 40,000 square foot. It goes by your building size goes by the by the uh, amount of land you have. To well, have she 40,000 square foot building would not. Be, she wouldn't get a building permit because of the size of the property. Well, she, she has 4.46 acres of that parcel, okay? And I believe she has how much, 10 acres? No. Seven? 6.45. Okay. What is on the thing? Okay. Let's uh, uh, go. Ron? Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Wade, but Miss Gidry. It, it seems it seems as if after all of the discussion, Ryan, put the mic down where we can hear you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it seems as if after uh, lengthy dis discussions and concerns, that to satisfy your situation as well as your neighbors, um, would you consider a deed restriction to be pl put into place? for you to move forward with what you like to do with this? I will consider it, but I don't know. I'm hearing something about their homeowners, like who would manage it, or I'm hearing no, all these different no. things. I'm not going to have them involved in my... No, 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 no. No, oh. no a deed restriction <laughs> is put onto your, your title, your deed, and it is recorded at the courthouse. We don't have anything to do with it. They don't. It's just the fact that their, if one of their concerns is the fact that Okay, you sell the property, they can put the kennels on. That's what I'm hearing is that, that they don't want the commercial end of the kennels. And so if you do, um, if you put the restricted, you're saying that this is going to be the horse training facility only. Correct. So that's what would be on your deed and recorded in the courthouse. In the event that you sell that land and somebody buys it, that stays with them because it's still zoned 
with the animal training. I will absolutely look into it, you know, but I don't think that that's their, that well, is not going to satisfy. It's, <laughs> well, it's what you need to do. But I am, I will, I, I, I actually, when dear Dan Weir, I was at a resident's home who told me they were totally told something different and they called him and asked him to come to the home and meet with me there and he refused. So that, that when he said that I did not attempt, that actually, I spoke with him on the phone once, I called him and the second time he refused to come to a homeowner who signed his petition who said she would wish to X her name off of it. Okay. Is that all? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Lawrence. Bug? I have a question for counsel, if I could, real quick. All right. If we pass this thing as it's written tonight, it goes to AT1 Training and Housing District with all the rights and privileges associated with that. That is correct. And while they may not be able to build a 400,000 square foot building, they could build maybe a 200,000 square foot building. They are in fact restricted by the size of the lot as far as the size of the building. I understand that, but what right. I'm saying is the, the comment in the presentation was that there's only room for three more horses in the current barn. If we pass this, there's nothing to prohibit building a second barn. That's correct. But I can have as many horses as I want now. It, just bear oh, with I'm me sorry. if you would. Okay. Sorry. What I'm saying is if we pass it as it is now, there, there are no restrictions. If there was some kind of way you can reach an agreement between the bluffs and and the cross gates or whoever it may be to say I will build no more than one more barn of this size and I will house no more than this many horses which is not in the current parish regulations and I will not put kennels then all of a sudden it takes the argument away what are you follow what I'm saying now the thing is for the benefit of the people out here, if you do that with a deed restriction, it's a deed restriction. It means that when you sell that property, you sell it with those rules. It also means that if she violates those rules, the parish is not gonna get involved. The deed restriction would have to be written in favor of the bluffs. And if you violate it, then the bluffs could take action, but the parish would. I probably, I probably wouldn't get involved with the bluffs then, if that means that they're going to... Uh, well, no. I mean, it has to be an entity. Right. It, it's got to be some... I, I, I just would like to rezone the property as I came here today, because I don't think that's going to satisfy them anyway. So I'm here today to rezone it to the AT1 with no deed restriction. Okay. I'd be willing to discuss and do other things, but I feel like they're just... It's... Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Manella. Ms. Gidry? Yes. What the commissioners are trying to say to you is obviously we want to satisfy, if you will, the community as a whole. That's our obligation. Correct. As I stated before, it's this commission's uh, preference always in that when things are contentious that we ask beforehand, if you heard uh, Mr. Shane who comes in front of this as an attorney many times, they preface we've met with homeowners, we've met with the association of associations to ensure that issues are worked out. What I would recommend is I will put a, a, uh, a motion to postpone for 30 days till next month, which will afford you the opportunity to meet with the bluffs and with Crossgates. It is not unusual for a commissioner to attend. I will personally attend. It's within my area. For the record, Mr. Belisario lives in Crossgates. Our chairman lives there. I live off of Military Road. If it's your intentions to do have those deed restrictions, it would afford you the opportunity to meet with them and do so. 
for which you'd come back to this commission with the deed restrictions, then depending how we vote, if this commission were to vote to change the zoning, those deed restrictions would be enforceable by the homeowners associations. If in that time period it doesn't, and you come back in front of this commission and you say, I want the AT1 designation with no restrictions, this commission will then vote for or against it. The question is, are you willing to? But I've already spent 10 days meeting with all these people. No, you, 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 no the fact is, by not the, the admission. Not in their meeting. But. No, by admission, you're not. You did not. Okay, by their admission, that was not afforded to you. Oh, okay. not at their board meeting, but I went door to door. Okay. 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 That's fine. All right. Uh, Mr. Randolph, you had your light on? Okay. Mr. Matthews? Yeah. Um, what I think Don't put we're talking about is what we call a community meeting. Okay. That would be here in, in our chambers, uh, moderated by one, two, or three or, or, or so of the commission members. Uh, you wouldn't be going to their board meeting. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't want to put you in the lion's den. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but this way, uh, we can hear again uh, what the bluffs and if the Crossgates people are there, what Crossgates is interested in. Uh, and, and definitively determine what the real problem is. I think the idea of this kennels and, and the deed restriction for the kennels is a total red herring. Uh, I don't think that, well, I know, nobody that came up here and spoke against it was even about dog kennels. That, that didn't seem to be the problem. It seems to be the hot, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, sir, I've got the floor. If it was a concern, I feel it would have been brought up. But what we have here is they're interested in not having commercial, N not the, not your horses. They seem to be terrified that if you get the AT1 tomorrow, we're going to have an industrial zoning there. We're not. That's not the way it works. Okay, but. If it will satisfy anybody to have such a, a meeting uh, where they can express whatever real concerns they have, fine. Uh, but I really don't think that that's a big problem. I, for one, would be willing to vote tonight. And, uh, you know, it's clearly my intention is what you're asking for is not out of the question. All right. We, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? No, no. 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 The, the most the motion is to approve the AT1. I made it. Now, if if there's if there's another motion, now he, Bill did not make a motion. Dave did not make a motion. Yes, Matthews made it. I'm I seconded it. Mr. Matthews made the motion. To what? I seconded to approve. To approve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I? No, I just want. No, to, no, I'm not the bluffs. No, and I'm not crossing. Well, you, you can. So okay. Mr. Weir and and uh, Ms. Uh, Gidry, would you all want us to schedule a community meeting in this chamber? Yes. I didn't hear the. I'm sorry, Bill. I didn't hear the motion. I heard. Okay. We had a long discussion after. Had a motion. And Mr. Hines seconded, I believe. For the I community meeting. No, to approve. To approve, right. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. The motion on the floor is to approve the AT1. Please vote. <laughs> motion carries nine to one. So it. It is approved for AT1. Now, to the folks here that disagree with that decision, you have the opportunity to appeal it to the council. But in the meantime, I would very strongly urge that you get with the uh, Mr. Belisario, and he can have a community meeting here just like we were going to, or made the offer. 
So it's up to y'all now. You can uh, appeal it uh, to the council, and hopefully in the meantime, y'all can get your heads together and, and come up with an agreeable uh, solution. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, y'all, please be quiet when you leave, and don't go out in the lobby and, and uh, discuss this. You can go outside. All right, item six, zoning case 14-06-048. Existing zoning is A3, proposed zoning A6, uh, fam multifamily residential. It's point eight one acres. The petitioner is Mary and Todd Spell. Owner is Spell Holdings, LLC. Excuse me, excuse me. The parcel is located at the end of Oak Crest Drive, east of Lee Road, north of Stafford Road, being lot 33, Barker's Corner Estates, Ward 2, District 2. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the site to be developed with residential uses. Staff does not have any objections to the request, considering that the site is abutting commercial zoning on the south side and west side, which is currently developed with a gas station and electrical substation. Note that the A6 zoning district will allow for multifamily residential development at a maximum net density of one unit per 4,000 square feet of property. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes, I, I just wanted to let it, uh, all the commissioners know that I just distributed a revised um, staff report. Some of you may, might have received it by email, but the last sentence has been completely changed, or the second sentence after, under staff comments has been changed from the original staff report that was submitted to you. So what we read just now was the revised report. So you, you're changing the, the second sentence? The, the, what was read to you and what is, is, is correct. What I just distributed to you is the correct sta is the revised staff report. The okay. original one that was sent to you, we okay. changed the second Yeah, the number six is wrong. Is, is that, that right? It goes to nine? Less than nine units now, correct? With the, with the recalculation. Is no, that why no, this is changed? No, but it is, if you read the, the current staff report that I just distributed to you a second ago, we're just talking about the maximum density under A6. So the, the previous staff report is to be disregarded. Okay. But that's, I'm just saying, though, it does come out to be less than nine units for this 0. 0.81 acres. Okay. All right. Uh, is uh, someone here representing the spells? Yes. I didn't sign a card, but. Well, we uh, need you to do that, but, okay. but go I ahead and really speak right now. I really wasn't planning on speaking, honestly. I thought I was going to speak for yourself. Okay, please but state your name. My name is Todd Spell, and uh, thank you for uh, hearing me. And first of all, I ain't got no horses, so. <laughs> it ain't nothing about no horses. Golly. I never heard such a mess. But anyway, um, it, it's, uh, it's behind the station that we own right there, uh, and it's, it's zoned now for, for housing, and we like to turn it into um, – to be able to put duplexes. And actually with the size, with the uh, set asides and all that, uh, we got the dimensions from Helen and all that and went to a, uh, a draftsman. And we can only put, the most we can put on it is two units. And right now we're just gonna put one unit and then go from there. But So it'd be a total of four rentals, but two duplexes. That's just the most that we would be allowed to put on it with the set asides, so. Other than that, that's that's really it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public. Bring it back to the commission. I believe Ms. Casabon, you had your light on. Before yes, Mr. Um, this is appropriate, as he's stating. Um, he has a <coughs> service sta uh, service station. Um, it's commercial in the front. This would be in the back. It is um, part of an older uh, subdivision. And uh, this is at the end of a cul-de-sac, um, and it, it, it would 
be very appropriate because there is a need for a little of the A6 out there. So I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Ms. Gazabon to approve, seconded second. by Mr. Hines. I just, Mr. Matthews. I just got one question. one question. How many units can he put on, on this piece of property? He's saying that he thinks he can only put two doubles and Sweet. we're getting other information that maybe it's nine units. I mean, what? If you calculate it, if you divide 0.81 acres by 4,000, it, it comes to a, a, a number. I, I don't have the, exa oh, that, the exact but number. The setbacks. However, once we, you know, I've been working with them and looking at their plot plan, they still have to meet all the setback landscaping and parking requirements. And, and the property is not even one acre. So it considerably reduced the number of units that they can place on the property. So what we're really at, looking at with the setbacks and the parking and everything else, two uh, doubles. Correct. Two, two doubles units. with but, two yeah. doubles. Yeah. Okay. Go to the four units. Okay. Okay, Mr. Willie. I just got uh, just a suggestion, too. Uh, it was mentioned that it was part of an old subdivision. Uh, just to, You might just want to check it and see if there's any deed restrictions against uh, multifamily. Uh, in, in that old subdivision with bylaws or something. I, so I, I, I think we did that one so long ago that they didn't know what these <laughs> restrictions yeah, was. I might want to check that, Todd. <laughs> okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any, any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all. Item 8, zoning case 14-06-050, existing zonings A1 Suburban District, proposed zoning I1 Industrial District. It's 120 acres. The petitioner is Jeff Shane. The owner is Lee Road Dirt Pit LLC. Uh, parcel located on the uh, east side of... Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've skipped one. All right, we go back to item seven, zoning case 14-06-049, existing zonings A4A, uh, proposed zonings uh, HC2. It's 12,500 square foot. The petitioner is Deborah Levis, owners 3401 LLC, partial located on the northeast corner of Coast Boulevard and Berman Street, being lots 17, 18, 19, and 20 square 14. Uh, Central Park, Ward 8, District 12. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the site to be developed with commercial uses. Staff is not opposed to the commercial zoning on the site. However, the HC2 zoning district may be too intense considering that the site is abutting existing residences to the north and west sides along uh, Berman Street and Coast Boulevard. At this time, staff would like to recommend denial of the request. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Please state your name. Hi, I'm Deborah Levis from uh, Slidell. I apologize for skipping you. That's okay. Um, I brought a visual aid that I thought might show my proposals. I bought the um, four lots, which equal about a quarter of an acre, two years ago, and I knew that, that it was residential. But on um, Coast Boulevard, from the corner of Coast and Berman, I am the only piece of property that's not considered commercial all the way from Coast and Berman to Fremo Town Center. So I'm requesting, um, I was requesting H2, no, HC2, but since I'm so small, I have no problem with HC1 or NC2. Um, you'll see the proposals there. I either want to build to lease a, a professional office or sell to someone who would want to build and put a professional office. Okay. You've kind of opened the door now. We need to decide what zoning class that you, you really are, are wanting to do. Well, the reason I put HC2 was that directly across the street from me is the radio station, and they're HC2. My office is adjacent to these lots, and I'm actually, I, I won. So, you know, I was just looking for something that was already in the area. But I do understand Helen, you know, expressed that because I buffer or butt up to residential, maybe I'd want to do something lesser. That's why I say I'm, I'm not opposed to doing something lesser. All right, let me ask you this. Because what, what, 
is before us tonight is, is HC2. Yes. Would you uh, like for us to postpone this till next month and let you get with staff? No. She, I'm, she can amend it. I'm ready right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to amend it to? I mean, you, you've thrown out three zoning okay. classifications. Um, HC1, would no. that be agreeable? It's not that it's agreeable or not. I, I think you don't fully understand. I know this area very well. Okay. I fish in that retention pond right at Caddy Corner okay. from this residence. There's right. no, absolutely no way that it's going to get highway commercial back there. Absolutely none. Highway commercial. Okay. So your your before, desire for an office, yeah, I mean, before, NC2 is perfect. Yeah, I mean, but, and, before, but you see, I don't think you tr truly understand what you're trying to – commercial is not just commercial. You should really look at, at all the ordinances and find out exactly what – you'd like to put there and then come in and understand and then ascertain and tell us what zoning you require. It's not really our job to say, okay, you need to put NC2 or you need, I mean, yeah. basically we can say, okay, we, there's no way we're going to say how we commercial too. I mean, I can almost att attest to that. I know this area very well and you have residential just on the backside of you. Mm -hmm. There's homes right behind you there. So, you know, I think you need to, Come in a little bit more prepared for this, and this somebody, you know. So, uh, to be honest, you, you should probably maybe either instead of just asking us what what you could have, is that maybe we should uh, just postpone this, and you could think about it a little bit more and come back in. That's my suggestion. Okay, I I read every single one, and I looked at all the you know restrictions and the things that you could do. Would you be willing to accept the NC two? Yes. Yes. All right, that's I a neighborhood said. commercial. And I'll make a motion to NC2. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second to change from HC2 to NC2. And, and the real reason I say yes let, is let because it, I did read it. Let us vote on this now. All right. Uh, Jimmy, did, did you have a little comment on, on oh. NC2? No, no that, that's exactly Okay, so we've got a motion and a second to modify from HC2 to NC2. Okay. Does anyone else in the audience wish to speak on, on this right now? Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second to, to go to NC2. Please vote. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. I'd like to motion and make a motion to approve that. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. To approve going from AC4, A4A to HC2 on zoning case 14-06-049. I'm sorry, NC2. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Get my visual aid. All right. <clears throat> Now we're going to go to item eight. <laughs> All right. Item eight, zoning case 14-06-050. The existing zoning is A1 Suburban. Proposed zoning is I1 Industrial. Uh, it's 120 acres. The petitioner is Jeff Shane. Owner is Lee Road Dirt Pit, LLC. Partial located on the east side of Lee Road Extension, just south of Washington, St. Tammany Parish Line. Ward 2, District 6. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with residential and agricultural uses. The zoning change is being requested in order to allow for a commercial excavation to take place on the site. Note that a conditional use permit was originally approved on the site to operate a dirt pit. Staff has no objections to the request considering the site is mostly surrounded by undeveloped or vacant land and is already developed as a dirt pit. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Jeff Shane of the Joan Fusell Law Firm in Covington, P.O. Box 1810. Uh, represent the property owner, which is Lee Road Dirt Pit, LLC. Um, this case uh, is simply about my client wanting to have an opportunity to um, reactivate or recommence a commercial uh, dirt operation at this particular location. Um, the history of this 120-acre parcel is that it was traditionally or historically zoned or rural. Um, in 1999, Mr. Ray Grow III acquired a conditional use permit 
uh, from uh, your commission uh, to allow for the commercial excavation, excavation of dirt. Uh, he operated that pit successfully until around 06 or 07, at which time he ceased operation and there has been no operation at that site since that time. Um, as you know and as staff has noted, um, when the operation ceases for a period of more than six months, the conditional use permit lapses. And in this particular zoning classification that we are seeking, there are no conditional use permit opportunities. So um, picture a 142 acre site having been the subject of the conditional use permit in 1999. If you'll take a look at the attachment to your staff report, you will see that three parcels have been cut out or sold out to others. So that reduces the site from 142 acres to approximately 120 acres. Furthermore, take into consideration that the prior operation excavated approximately 30 acres or so of the 120 acres that my client acquired. So again, way back when, 142 acres, now my client, when he bought the property, only bought 120 acres, and we're gonna estimate that somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 acres uh, has been excavated previously under that conditional use permit. Um, when the Unified Development Code was adopted in 07, uh, it eliminated the conditional use permit in our rural for commercial dirt excavation projects. Uh, if you now look at I-1, uh, that is the least intense appropriate zone wherein you can, com um, you can make commercial excavation, but you should note that that is only pursuant to an administrative permit. So number one, the property cannot be excavated under its current A1 zone. Uh, number two, uh, it has to be zoned industrially, but we chose the least intense industrial zone. Number three, as an I-1 property, you can then seek an administrative permit, and our Unified Development Code has a specific section, 8.01 AN, and that's toward the rear of the code, but the important thing is it lays out about three pages of criteria for commercial excavation projects. So I don't want anyone to think that the seeking of an I-1 zone is for some purpose other than to allow us to get the administrative permit, which means we're gonna have to comply with all the special conditions found in 8.01 AN. Then and only then, if the Department of Development issues us an administrative permit, my client will be able to go in and do really two things. Number one, he is gonna to have to secure or stabilize the existing site. Um, the hole that's there was not left in a standard that would meet the current requirements of section 8.01 AN. So we recognize that things like slopes, you require a three to one slope, those types of things are gonna to have to be addressed obviously before he can get the permit. But the second thing he would like to do is he obviously wants to excavate dirt. Lee Road Dirt Pit LLC is literally and only in the business of excavating dirt. In particular, in this case, it's red dirt. And I think you'd be interested to know that it seems to me in a, in a zoning case, a change of zoning case, some of the things that we always want to know about, not only what are the existing zones in the area, but what are the existing uses in this area? This property literally abuts the Washington Parish border. There's a gravel road that runs right along the parish line. Immediately to the east of us is another dirt pit operation of approximately the same size, 125 acres with a huge hole. Immediately east of it is a second commercial dirt excavation operation, likewise of about the same size. So it's pretty obvious that there, that's a good resource in this area, the dirt. Obviously, I think people learned long ago that if you were going to excavate dirt, the wisest areas to do it would be where you'd be away from people, be away from residences, be away from businesses, be away from heavily traveled arteries. That's why it's at the northernmost portion of the parish. In fact, it's 
right near the area where Lee Road is no longer a hard surface road but becomes a gravel road as you enter Washington Parish. In addition to that, a property to the, on the west side of Lee Road, the property owned by the Richards family, which is probably uh, not, of course, uh, our commissioner, a totally different family, but it's probably 800 to 1,000 acres, and it has numerous prior pits on it. Some of you may have been on the commission a few years ago when I represented uh, the Bermuda uh, Company, uh, which was the Richards family, when I got a conditional use permit for a long range, sh uh, a long a shooting range, but for the, for the longer range, if you will. Uh, we probably got that permit five or six years ago. That was in one of the pits that's on the west side of Lee Road. So my point to you is simply this, uh, although to stabilize the current site and to commercially excavate dirt, we need a change of zoning. I also want you to know that it will be very much in keeping with the other actual land use in the area. Also, as a practical matter, although the property is zoned day one and most of that area is zoned day one, as you know, for the most part, the northern one-third of our parish was zoned day one in comprehensive rezoning, and for good reason, I might add. But I don't want you to think that this is a densely populated area. In fact, I would tell you that there's literally no homes other than two. There's one in the northwest corner. Uh, that person is aware uh, of what is going on this evening. There's also a home that's relatively close to the southwest corner of this property as well. But other than that, you see no homes when you get that far north on the road. And I'm sure, um, again, it's a quiet area. Now, there's a lot of trucks that obviously run the roads because um, there's a good bit of sand, gravel, and dirt that's excavated in Washington and St. Tammany Parish that obviously comes south. And that's, of course, what provides, in this case, the red dirt that most of us use when we're building homes, when we're putting in driveways, when we're building new roads. There's a variety of uh, construction activities where the red dirt's needed. My client is in that business. I'm happy to say that as the economy grows, he needs other opportunities to mine that resource. And for that reason, uh, he has purchased this piece of property. He owns it, and he would appreciate your recommendation of I-1 zoning to the council. If I have any time left, I'd like to reserve it. Two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shane. All right, anyone else wish to speak for this zoning? All right, anyone else, anyone in the audience wish to speak against this zoning? Yes, ma'am. Come forward, state your name. My name is Deborah Burst, and I filled out a card. I live less than a mile away off of Strain Road. Matter of fact, I've been a resident here for 30 years. I've stood at this podium many, many times battling urban sprawl, and I've watched developers manipulate the system. So I stand here tonight along with the concerned citizens behind me dressed in red to fight for change and to protect our pristine waters, our clean air, our green space, our wetlands, and most of all, our children. We stand here tonight as a single voice pleading that the Zoning Commission deny changing the zoning on this particular property from the um, residential um, to industrial. The current zoning and the 2025 land use plan calls for preserving the countryside, the forests, and possibly single family dwelling. There was a conditional permit, as was noted, to allow a dirt pit, but it expired in 2006, 2006. The zoning change request seems quite dramatic and inappropriate. 32 acres of this land was recently purchased in January, with knowing that this land was zoned the A1. We continue to allow our forests to be decimated, in this case, raping the land with no clear plan or legal responsibility for remediation. I believe St. Tammany Parish is in danger, in danger of letting sometimes overzealous developers get approved in doing things 
that aren't necessarily what they say they're going to do. The parish has been, uh, become a focal point for inappropriate use. <coughs> our zoning reps, regs have become our main line of defense in preventing St. Tammany from becoming a breeding ground for purposes not defi defined in the zoning classifications. Some of you may believe any connection of this change and fracking may be a huge jump. But remember this, Hellas Oil is requesting DNR permits on land zone residential. Keep your, keep your presentation to the agenda. We're here to do with fracking. Yes, I know. I'm just pointing out that what and can happen is, I know, I'm just pointing out that zoning and your commission is vital, and it's our line of defense in keeping St. Tammany beautiful and free of any kind of industrial shenanigans. So we're here tonight asking, again, that this be denied. We also have some people here that's going to go into details on what an industrial uh, zoning does allow. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You have about six minutes uh, for the other folks. Terry Stevens, 725 Dove Park Road. What concerns me about this particular site is that, yes, 32 acres were used as a borrow pit previously, but as we've already discussed or has been brought up by Mr. Shane, the conditional use permit did expire, and this new purchaser knew that the underlying zoning was A1. Um, all night long we've talked about adjacent uses and in essence blowing a big hole in the zoning ordinances by changing something so severely. And in this case, even though it's rural, this is still, everything around this is A1. And if there's a borrow pit next to this, I'm, unless they have a conditional use permit, I don't know how they are legally operating a borrow pit because it's not allowed. There is a gravel pit de, um, designation or definition in the zoning code, but it isn't allowed specifically in any zoning category, and that is very troublesome. Where it does show up is the administrative permitting allowance, and oddly enough, it ends up with all the intermittent uses like snowball stands, Christmas tree sales, seasonal seafood peddlers, seasonal produce stands, and fireworks sales, so it's not even, a, doesn't seem appropriate in that same category is something that the administration could allow only because although there are specific guidelines governing what you can do with a borrow pit, after the borrow pit is used, you end up with decimated land, all the trees are gone, all the grass is gone, it's a giant pit and they can walk away from it with no remediation plan whatsoever. So I am concerned that it's all residential around here. You will be fundamentally changing. Not a, you're not taking a small leap. You're taking a huge leap. And all the other land around that's likely to go industrial if you choose industrial for the zoning. But moreover, there is no designation for this particular use category. And I think that the petitioner should go back. It should be brought before the council or brought before the zoning board again, determine what borrow pits are, what they need to be, how they need to be governed, how they need to be left when they're not borrow pits anymore, and then add it to I-2, I-3, big trucks, lots of noise, lots of dust, lots of gravel, heavy equipment. It should go in a particular category, not just be left up to administration to approve. Thank you. Thank you. We have about three minutes. Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is Cindy Birking. I have a card. I'm going to hand it in the box. Um, I know you say that this has nothing to do with fracking, and I'm not a lawyer like Mr. Shan, but I feel like, as many other people in St. Tammany, that the citizens of St. Tammany have a right to preserve the aesthetic values of St. Tammany. That's clean air, clean water, forest, healthy soil. If this property is rezoned industrial, at this point in time, when everybody is up in arms about what might possibly happen because 
The property that Hellas is interested in is also not zoned industrial. I do not trust, and you say that, sir, but that's, does not. well, the oral intent of the owner, per Mr. Shen, is not enforceable by law as what was brought up just about the horses. I mean, look at all the brouhaha about a couple of horses. This is way more important than horses. And there is no conditional use permit available. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know if there's any deed restriction on in industrial property. But I don't think that we could be assured that the owner of this property, if it gets rezoned industrial, we don't know that this owner could not be persuaded, like many others in this parish, to, uh, to get in bed with the oil and gas and, and allow an unsustainable energy project on that property. We don't know that, and there's nothing to guarantee us that that will not happen. And that is my concern. So I think that if we don't have any guarantee that there would be no construction of an unsustainable energy system or the siting of any structure that would be used in the operation of unsustainable energy system, then I would like to at least ask for a postponement on this rezoning and possibly a public meeting so that we could totally understand and have figure out what kind of guarantee we can get so that if we um, rezone this property, it, it would be similar to what a deed restriction would have been for the previous woman who wanted to have horses. I mean, if this, I mean, that's all it would take is this guy to turn around and say, well, yeah, I was going to have a dirt pit, but now I can make a ton more money and blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, the first one's in the door. And after the first one gets here, the, there's going to be a lot more to follow. And it's okay. Thank you. We have about a minute and 21 for those that are opposed. Anyone else wish to speak? Wait till, wait till you get to the oh, mic. My name is John Ersamik, and I've dropped a card. And uh, I live near that. I travel up and down Lee Road pretty regular in 1082. And uh, the volume of trucks that I see going up and down the road and the speed with, that those trucks travel at, with no dirt pit in operation at this site, uh, my concern is the additional traffic, how much volume of dirt would be removed on a daily basis, and how that would affect the, the people that live up and down that road. Um, those trucks will do in excess of 70 miles an hour on a two-lane road with no shoulder. And that's my main concern as far as the use of this land. I understand mineral rights, whatever. I'm, if this is what you're applying for, this is the reason I'm opposed to it uh, because I think it's a real hazard right now with no dirt pit. I, I don't even want to think about what it's going to be like, what, these big trucks traveling down that road hauling dirt more than they are now. And okay. that's, that's all I got to say. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. All right. Time's expired. Uh, Mr. Shane, uh, we'll go to the rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal phase. You have five minutes. Do I have five plus five two? Plus the, plus the two, I think it was. One. Thank you. Um, I guess first and foremost, hopefully I made it clear and hopefully you understand, but if you want to operate and rehabilitate a prior commercial dirt operation at this location, you simply under current law have no choice but to seek I-1. So I'm going to take some of the arguments that some have made and let's take them to their literal conclusion. I hope that all of you have a code in front of you. If not, I'm going to take just a minute and read what you can do in I-1 as a matter of right. That means that you don't have to get an administrative permit. And I hope that all of you, if you have not been to the property, you do understand that where it's located, because I can assure you that most of us would get lost trying to find this site. I did the first time uh, because it's, it's a little difficult, but it's largely because there's nothing but trees up there. There are eight permitted uses in I-1. And if you think about this track, 120 acres, that has this large 30-acre hole on it, would it be good for a radio and television studio and broadcasting station? Would it be good for an auto body shop? Would it be good for an outdoor storage yard? Would it be good for a welding shop, an indoor recreational facility, including a restaurant without lounge, 
an office warehouse, a portable storage container, or an outdoor display pre-assembled building, pool and playground equipment. I'm not suggesting that none of those uses couldn't be made there, but if you know the locale and you know the land, I promise you, I know a little bit about the private sector because I represent business people, you could not make a nickel doing any of those things at that location. So I don't think the change of zone to I-1 creates uses by right that should necessarily be disruptive to those that live in the area. Now let's address the use that my client does want to make. Yes, he needs I-1, but I've made it clear he must get an administrative permit under Section 8.01, and if I said uh, A-N earlier, it's uh, actually A-V. Uh, that uh, particular set of standards has very clear requirements with regard to buffers, with regard to slopes, with regard to road, with regard to drainage, and things of that nature. And I think it's interesting that this area has numerous pits already, yet we are unaware, I am unaware, of violations or conditions that have created impacts that are unreasonable. Um, any form of use of this 120 acres, by definition, is going to generate additional traffic. There's no way to deny that. But I would tell you that probably 120 acres, if you had a residential subdivision there, in all likelihood would generate a lot more cars, a lot more trips, and a lot more traffic than the amount of trucks that are going to excavate dirt from this site. That's not to minimize that the trucks won't need to travel at safe speeds, because they certainly do. But if there's one place in this parish where law enforcement ought to know that they can set up and watch how trucks travel, it would be this area, not because of my client's hope, but because of the industry. And that's really what we're talking about. We have suggested, parish government has suggested through the years that this is an appropriate place for the industry of excavating dirt. Again, it's not by chance that you have two active pits, which I assume operate legally under conditional use permits. Um, I think that's probably the case. Um, this particular pit, as I said, no longer has the benefit of a conditional use permit. With regard to the suggestion of some other use that's been referred to this evening, I will only say this. We can make it very clear that if you recommend a change to I-1, the only uses my client can make are the eight that I read to you or the administrative permit uses that were alluded to earlier none of which present any of the dangers or fears that some have alluded to this evening. If that were the case, why change the zone? Keep it A1. Go drill for oil in A1. That is not what Lee Road Dirt Pit LLC is all about. They are simply seeking to have an opportunity to utilize their right to legally extract dirt from a property that they bought for this very intent and purpose. For those reasons, I ask that you recommend the change of zoning to I-1. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Uh, we're in the rebuttal, and you folks uh, have five minutes, just like Mr. Shane had. Uh, about a year ago, Pat Brister assured me that a butter notification was going to be put into play. A butter notification would let anyone within 500 feet of a property line be notified by mail that a zoning change was going to occur next to them. It would only be fair. It didn't happen in my neighborhood. It made us very, very sad and very upset and very motivated to not see it happen to other people. It hasn't happened yet. It's unfortunate it hasn't happened yet. But I, in this case, just like the people earlier tonight, it would have been a lot more fair if that process were activated. And in this case, I think it's important as well, if you're going to contemplate changing this one parcel, when all the others around it are A1, that the abutting residents or the abutting landowners, even if they don't have a residence, know that this is what's going to happen. Those people might have had plans for a subdivision, which would not likely happen if a gravel pit's going in next to them. There is a lot of heavy equipment involved in gravel pits. It's just a fact. It's a different use. It's a much more intensive use. It's a heavy duty industrial use. So I would urge you to table this, 
until such time as the abutting residences or residential people were notified that this is what was coming their way. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm a resident of Lee Road. My daughter's gone to Lee Road Elementary. He had said that if cops wanted to set up and monitor the trucks, they could. In between Barker's Corner and the end of Lee Road, the uh, Covington area where it goes into Collins or whatever, there's absolutely no place for cops to set up and monitor these trucks. If they were to find how many dead, have you, Lee Road, seriously, how many dead man curves are on Lee Road? I literally saw a car fly off a curb and go into the uh, power lines. It's a very, very, very dangerous road. Trucks are going to make it even more dangerous. We already have so many trucks. I think that everybody should know about this. If they're going to be bringing in more traffic, it's going to be more dangerous. In residentials, they do not drive like truckers. A trucker's job is to take his load and get it there as fast as possible and get another load. A mother's job is to get her children there safely. Just saying. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You have about two and a half minutes. That's more than I'll need. Hello, I'm Stephanie Houston Gray. Um, we've heard some discussion from the. Um, Can you speak up a little bit? Sure. We've heard some discussion from council. Um, I think characterizing uh, the, the past of St. Tammany Parish as if that destines the future of St. Tammany Parish. And I think this is a critical moment for us to begin to think about what we want that future to look like. When I imagine the parish, I imagine um, it is a very intimate close community, not a place with far-flung fields and trees that are sort of irrelevant, just waiting to be mowed down and turned into some sort of uh, commercial venture. Trees create oxygen. Um, they help to help us to retain water so that we're not uh, made more vulnerable to storm surges and such. All these kinds of coastal problems that we are having down in lower New Orleans will be having up here too relatively shortly. But I just wanted to share this with you in particular right now um, because we've you, there's been some attempt to put this sort of issue of fracking to the side, and I think that it's just important to note that on the Econa Oil website, the company from Canada, they state that they're looking for um, land to buy at the Washington St. Samity line to frack. Um, and there's no zoning um, that I understand of in place that prohibits oil and gas development in this parish. So it is a concern about every kind of transaction, whether it be point of sale, zoning, et cetera, um, because we need clean air, clean land, and clean water. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> we need to have the card uh, filled out. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to address that um, Mr. Shane did not uh, give us any assurances other than verbally that, that this land would never, there could not be any kind of a deed restriction or other kind of restriction put on this rezoning. So, I mean, that would make us feel a lot better. And if we can't get to that point, then I do think that this needs to be postponed until we have a public meeting about it. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, anyone else wish to speak? You got about 30 seconds. Okay, I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commissioners. Ms. Casabon. Yes. I appreciate how hard and the concern that, that you ladies have and the commitment that you have to this parish. But I can assure you I am committed to this parish, have been for over 20 years, sat here. Dirt pits were one of my first uh, cases that came up and we had more people you could not get in this room over the dirt pits. We put, as a parish, conditions on these. I understand you're talking about the zoning. I know this area. The trees that you're talking about are owned by timber companies that they cut those down ever so often when they mature and they replant. It's an area that is, um, I, I know of one family that lives there uh, across the street and I think they're related to me, but this area is, where you would want a dirt pit. I understand your concerns now. Dirt pits are across, that are already operating in there. As far as Mr. Shane's client, I have known him for 20 years and I was his biggest, um, I fought against him for a very long time because he had pits off of, um, around Walheim in Sub, the, he, they would go down people's houses right next door to it, and I just couldn't see that. 
But then I saw the precautions and what they did to protect, and this was in a neighborhood. Where this one's going, there's, it's, it's just totally, totally in the woods, close to the uh, Bochetta River. You talk about reclaiming. I did get a chance, and in these 20 years I've been on this, watched and went and seen how they do reclaim it and they fill it, the trees that are, that are on it and so on. So number one, as far as dirt pits, our parish is concerned on how they're taken care of and what we do with them and when they're finished digging, what they, they have to do, certain things about the sloping or reclaiming. So it's not like we don't have uh, in place with this um, permit. I know you're talking about the rezoning. If we rezone it, that they have to go for an uh, administrative permit that, they, that we have in place as far as our parish goes, that I have confidence. As far as dirt pits, this is what's built our country, our parish. Uh, those that are here now go, we don't want anybody else here, so, so we don't need dirt pits to build any more houses and stuff. But that's not how it used to be. Um, I, I know this area. The pits that are there running uh, has nothing to do with, with the fracking uh, or what you know, could take place there now. I'm going to make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Ms. Casabon to approve, second by uh, Mr. Hines. Mr. Willie. I just have a question of Jeff uh, regarding the plat itself. I'm looking at the 120 acres, and you said it was like three parcels, two were sold already? or something. Three parcels were sold out before my client acquired the okay, property. Okay, is that inside that 120 acre? That is actually, if you look at the entire perimeter, it would be 142 acres. Uh -huh. And the sum of those three parcels, if you're looking at page two, which would be the sellouts, Okay, I around. guess that's where I'm leading to. So parcel A and parcel B, is that owned by, by your client or no? Uh, no. So he we would don't be know. digging around their parcels? I'm sorry? So the digging would, would, would be around their parcels? Yes, and we have to provide the buffers. Okay, that, uh, that's just one of my concerns. Yes. I'm looking at this map when here. When we submit our administrative permit, we are going to have to delineate the areas that we intend to excavate and to the extent that we abut property lines, we know that we're going to have to set back a certain area. Just the way it looks, it looks like you make some islands of these people's property. I'm well, saying. One of the things that if you saw Google, you would see that a lot of that area is already excavated. Okay. Meaning not only the uh, parcels in question, but the area between those two parcels. And there's A and no B. homes on any of those but, parcels, right? I'm sorry. There's no homes on any of those parcels. Oh, no. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, I just want, you know, since they belong to somebody else, uh, you know, they, they still have access to their property some kind of way if you dig around. There's, it. A, there's a road that runs okay. through the Washington St. Tammany Electric Cooperative right of way, that 100 okay. foot right of way, and that is the access to those parcels. Okay. All right, thank you, Jeff. Okay. Uh, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews. Um, yes, Jeff. Uh, parcel A and B actually are dirt pits now. Is that correct? Not, no, sir. Not entirely. A and well, it looks like from the map that well, A and B are... It's part, part of the excavated area, but they're yeah. not operational. No, no, so. but I mean they're, they're, they're well, pits now. When the gentleman got the conditional use permit, it was on the entire 142 okay. acres, and you're correct, he excavated some of A and B, okay. as you can well see. And the other, the Nipe area, what is that? Uh, I mean, that's it looks a, like on here it's just That's a parcel trees. that was sold off to an individual okay, before and my and client it's, it's purchased trees, it. With a home on it. Correct. That's the house that I referred to in the southwest okay. corner. Okay, so there, uh, the closest home is, is that on the, the Knipe property? Yes, there there's, also, a, there's also a home at the northwest corner. A parcel, uh, parcel B, right? A parcel oh. B, yes, sir. That's oh. about an acre inside with an access. And they are aware of this. Are they here tonight? Uh, they are not. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, I, am, I am told that the councilman called, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the councilman told us that he called those people that live to the north. Yes, sir. Okay. Before we uh, got to, before tonight. And there was an appropriate sign posted on Lee Road. Okay. It, um, it was at one time, yes, sir. Yeah. I don't know if it's still there. Um, one of the speakers indicated that this is not an appropriate area for this. Um, it appears to me we've got 
dirt excavation places all over this, on all sides of this, uh, uh, to the east and west. Uh, and then north is another parish, and there's probably dirt excavation up there. Um, we're talking about this as A1 being residential. Um, in truth and fact, in this part of the parish, A1 is just a kind of a holding designation. Uh, everyone realizes that it will not be A1 forever when, if there is 20 years from now uh, or more, uh, some development up there, we're gonna have to be changing this from A1 to something that's more realistic. Uh, the concern for oil well drilling, I-1 does not have a provision for oil well drilling. I-2 does. So if they wanted to sell this to somebody to drill an oil well, they got to come back again and ask for I-2 I uh, rezoning. Um, as, as Martha indicated, um, the dirt from these dirt pits uh, is what my house is sitting on and probably most of the, uh, your other homes are sitting on the dirt from dirt pits, either this one or much, one much like it. Uh, we, we need this dirt for our subdivisions, our roads, any other construction that this parish has to have for it to continue to grow and to continue to uh, thrive, construction must continue. Uh, I think if there is an appropriate place for dirt excavation in this parish, this is it. So I got Mr. Davis, you had your light on? Did you? Okay. All right, any further discussion? We have a motion and a second to approve zoning case 14-060-050. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, page three. Item 9, Zoning Case 12-03-023, major amendment to, the, to PUD, Planned Unit Development Overlay. It's 51.27 acres. The petitioner's uh, James H. Simpson. The owner's Team Discipleship Incorporated. Representatives Paul Marone. Uh, partial located on the north side of Penn Mill Road, west of Quave Road, north of US 190, Ward 3, District 3. Staff. The request consists of a reconfiguration of the previously approved plan in order to remove most of the lots from the wetlands area. Note that the changes will create an increase in the number of lots from 92 lots to 106 lots, as well as an increase, an increase in the gross density of the development from 1.8 1, from 1 lots per acre to 2.01 lots per acre. The site plan shows some green space area throughout the subdivision, including a recreation area which would be developed, which should be developed with picnic tables, benches, gazebo, and play equipment. Uh, walking paths should also be provided throughout the proposed linear green space in the center of the subdivision. Also attached to your staff report, um, there is a picture of a building that is currently existing on a property that the petitioner is proposing to turn into a clubhouse as well as a covered patio for the resident of the subdivision. At this time, staff would like to recommend approval of the PUD, the major amendment to the PUD. However, staff have a stipulation that additional passive and active amenities should be provided on the site. Thank you. Mr. Marone. Thank you, Mr. Daugherty. Paul Marone on behalf of the petitioner for Simpson Farms. Uh, this 51.27 acres was originally zoned A3 uh, back in 2012. Some of you may recall when it came through at that time, the PUD overlay was also approved uh, at that June meeting as well. Uh, the purpose for amending the plan uh, is primarily to be able to avoid uh, some of the more sensitive wetlands on the site. Uh, we're also reconfiguring some of the proposed infrastructure as well. Due to the shape of the property, the, the, the general nature of the developed land is not changing. Uh, other than at the at the northern point and in fact we're moving what were a variety of lots along the northeastern section uh, to the northwestern section to avoid some of those wetlands. 
Uh, as staff noted, our density is changing slightly from 1.8 units per acre to 2 units per acre. That's still within our existing underlying zoning of A3. It's also consistent with our yield plan that we were required to provide to the staff. Finally, it's also consistent with the other developments in the area, including Pruden Creek, Pin Mill, Pin Mill Place, and Pin Wheel Court. Uh, you'll notice that the plan still preserves the large buffer along Pin Mill Road. Uh, our plan also has uh, more green space than is required. In fact, we're at 36 percent with 18.4 acres. Uh, since our last hearing before you, uh, there has been a modification in the proposal for the utilities. Uh, we are proposing off-site utilities as, a as opposed to on-site utilities. Uh, at the time we came through in 2012, Pruden Creek had not yet been developed. It is now in the process of being developed. As a result, we'll be able to tie in to the utilities that are being constructed there. That will serve a couple of purposes, one of which uh, is that we will have a single point discharge for both developments, which is preferred by DEQ and is, is preferred by your environmental services uh, office. Um, as staff noted, um, they are suggesting that we have some additional amenities. We have no objection to that whatsoever and are happy uh, to comply with that, that request and to have some additional active and passive amenities on the plan. Uh, if we're fortunate enough to move through this amendment, we hope to be back to you for tentative in the very near future, at which time we'll detail exactly what those amenities will be and where they'll be. One of those amenities was alluded to by staff, and that is the, the proposed community center that we intend to have on the property. As you may recall, uh, those of you that were on the commission in 2012, this originally was part of the Simpson Sod Farm. And in fact, the Simpson Sod Farm office was lo is located uh, on the property. And uh, the property has grown up a bit over the years, and there was some question about the condition of that building. Uh, fortunately, Mr. Simpson has kept it heated and cooled all of these years. And other than a few broken windows, uh, all utilities are operational, water and sewer are there. Uh, it's about a 2,400 square foot uh, heated and cooled area with an additional uh, pavilion area behind it, which he had ultimately used for, for housing some of his attractors and equipment, but which will make an excellent location for outside activities that will be covered. So that, that building, uh, sits within the recreation area. So that will be the hub for the amenities that we propose to have there. Uh, we, will, we will enhance that building, we'll bring it back, uh, and we'll be able to locate many of the amenities that staff suggested in and around that recreation area. Um, finally, back in 2012, we made some commitments to this commission and to the council, and I just want to be very clear uh, that we are standing by those commitments, uh, one of which was that we had proposed uh, to donate uh, one acre uh, near the southeast corner of the property to the fire district. They needed a substation in that area, uh, and we are still committed to doing so. In fact, we have executed the documents to make that happen so that they can have their fire district uh, uh, substation here, which will help not only this development, but the entire area with regards uh, to the insurance rates. Also, uh, we were in discussions in 2012 with the small airport that is located near us. At that time, I submitted a letter on the record detailing some fencing requirements and notification requirements. Uh, just in the event that any of those gentlemen happen to be listening tonight, uh, none of them are here, but I wanted to assure them that we are still well aware of those commitments. We intend to abide by those commitments uh, once construction actually begins and all in accordance with my letter that I submitted to them and, and put on the record uh, several years ago. With that said, I'll be happy to answer any questions that any of the commissioners may have, but we would respectfully request your approval for the amendment to our plan so that we might move forward through the planning process. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public and bring it back to the commission, Ms. Casabon. Yes, um, I was checking on those um, on the Vincent Airport, if y'all remember, so I'm glad you stated that. Um, the changes are um, noted and doesn't deviate that much, so I'm going to make a motion to approve. Second. 
We have a motion by Ms. Casabon to approve, seconded by Mr. Willie. Mr. Matthews. Paul, got a couple of questions. Um, on what I, I think is the new map, uh, the ditch that you are relocating, is that in the uh, northwest corner? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and that ditch is going to start where and go where because it looks like it's doesn't go any place doesn't start any right. place and it makes a right angle turn which is really interesting how right. that will flow it, it um first i would say that 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 ditch is um is a very narrow ditch in fact we inspected the ditch se several weeks ago before our submittal it's a very small ditch and it actually on the north ends of the of the property it actually enters a culvert which is a very relatively small culvert. So um, what we will do is we will pick it up where it enters our western boundary, and we, we will create a new ditch that will take it down to our corner and bring it around and put it right back into the culvert where it's going through right now. So um, rather than uh, traversing in a diagonal fashion, uh, we'll create the ditch that will accept it where it comes to us, and we'll drop it off right where it ends today. Okay. But just there will be a right angle flow here. That's got to be a that, real kink. The, the the servitude area is is a right angle, but there will be enough room in that so that it will not be a right angle. It will be able to curve uh, along that uh, along that point. Okay. Um, attached to all this is a data assessment form. I do notice that that data assessment form is dated January twelfth. Uh, there are several things on here that I think probably are no longer correct. Uh, number of lots of parcels shows 102. Clearly that's not no longer correct. Mr. Matthews, yes. we can request the engineer to provide a revised one, um, and we can send you a copy if you wish. Okay, because there's several things on here. Uh, the subdivision doesn't front on any major well, what about Penn Mill Road? Is that a major artery? Um, subdivision is not subject to inundation. I mean, you got some wetlands. Right. Uh, you know. I no, would say this was no the. No canals or waterway will be constructed within the subdivision. Your ditch. You know, so, I mean, we, we've got this, and this is supposed to be part of the record of mm -hmm. what we're approving, and clearly this is no longer correct. There, this was obviously submitted back in 2012 with the prior plan. Uh, Mr. McHugh's our engineer um, with regards to this amendment, and we wouldn't have any problem whatsoever uh, in having him update and revise this and submit that to staff. Okay. I, I would also point with regards to the, to the inundation, the, those wetlands were, uh, are basically ditches that were from the sod farm, so there's really not inundation and I would tell you there's not really wetlands on that site but the Corps would disagree with me about that it, that's always an interesting uh, <laughs> question is what is wetlands and what is not uh, and, and the Corps uh, determination has always been amazing to me what is and what isn't uh, the uh, the comprehensive plan analysis part of what the, you know, the staff says here Proposed 106 single lot residential subdivision does not meet the criteria of the 2025 future land use plan, but we're still recommending it, staff? Well, basically here is it's we're not debating, you know, the approval of the subdivision. Basically what we're here to debate is the, the major amendment to the PUD. So the PUD was already approved. The, 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 the comments remain the same but we're still in favor of the, of the well, request. Well, there's an increase in the number yeah. of lots, and I wondered if that was any part of this. I understand. Um, okay, I, I, I've got some confusion, I guess. I've got too many maps here showing too many things that are having, they're all different, and I've got some confusion with that. Um, but that being said, um, I'd like to see a new data sheet attached to this. And we can have that in uh, by tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Davis. Uh, Paul, your initial yield plan 
Was that the initial design of what this was going to look like? No. The, the, the yield plan um, under the new PUD overlay is not, is, is not intended to show a, design, a, a proposed design for the layout. Its sole purpose is to establish the density of the underlying zoning. Okay. So what, what the yield plan tells us is under A3, if you, what is the most lots that you could right. fit under A3? Right. It's not intended to show design in any way. <clears throat> okay. And, and, of course, in, in, that, in that design there with the yield plan, it was 106 lots. That's correct. And then you came back with uh, previously approved plans with 92 lots. That's correct. And now you're coming back with the plan back to 106 lots. But they're smaller lots than they're, the previous 92. They are, they're not necessarily any small, well, are you, are you referring to the yield plan lots? No, I'm, or you, are you referring the to? The approved plan was 92 lots. That's correct. Now it's 106 lots. That's correct. That's correct. And the lots are not necessarily smaller. On the 92 lot plan, there were um, about 26 50-foot lots. So we actually got rid of all of the 50-foot lots. Yeah, I see. So you just reduced the amount of green space. So the re the re re we reduced the amount of green space uh, to about 35%. That's, that's correct. Okay, and the lots, uh, looking at the new plan, the lots from uh, 24 to 53, they all have a, a backup green space in the middle, very middle of the... Uh, correct. That's a nice design. And that is probably, yeah, that's, that was one of the areas that, uh, that Ms. Lambert uh, mentioned with regards to trying to see about some of the amenities in, in, in that particular location. Yeah, and what would be, the, uh, just out of curiosity, what would be the purpose of that, especially since it goes from road to road? I mean, what would they do behind that? Really a walking path. I mean, is, is, is I think if there was an amenity in that area, it would be a walking path that, that would allow, for example, owners of lots two and three down in that area to, to get to the recreation area. Ah, okay, and of course you have proper uh, crossing ways for the, uh, for the individuals crossing grassy lane. Correct. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. All right. For any, any old business, any new business, motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you.